Hey guys, this is WalterFootball.com after dark show for March 31st, 2024. Uh, happy Easter for those who celebrate uh, and happy weekend uh, for those who don't. Um, so we're going to be doing uh, Hassan Reddick uh, trade uh, grades, uh, other NFL news. Uh, we're going to get to Game of Thrones uh, season two rewatch uh, and the usual uh, nonsense that we do with uh, Quacky T uh, before we get to everything. Please hit like, subscribe, comment below, share this video, visit the link in the description for the merch store. Thought I do this early before I forgot, and because like last time we did it at the like the 35 minute mark, so thought That's I'd get exactly it. why I'm laughing, right? Right, right. So, yeah, I thought I'd get it over with. I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna do this before I introduce uh Quacky, and then we start don't, talking. Don't give Quacky a second to interject, you're doing you're doing the right thing, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah. Uh, and also if you really want to help support the show is super chats. Uh, I was looking at the, uh, the revenue from YouTube ads, just YouTube ads, uh, for the past five days. And like, we had like a dollar 40 day, which is like great. But then it was like 60 cents, 25 cents, 80 cents, buck 20. Like that, that's what it was the past five days without the YouTube, without the super chats. Um, with, with the super chats, it's a lot higher. Uh, last, last episode, uh, we had a nine 11 super chat from John Sanders, which was great. Uh, we've had several, Several great super chats throughout the week um and so uh yeah we just really appreciate you guys uh supporting the show uh if you guys can just just it would help us out a lot and we really appreciate it uh, otherwise if you guys want to post comments questions about anything i'll answer anything you guys know i'll do that um but yeah without uh, further ado we have uh, quacky t uh tom how are you i'm good walt man you are you are wise uh, beyond your years to <laughs> Gotta get, don't, don't, yeah, don't my give mistakes. me a second to interject. It's, <laughs> it's your wise to do that. You know, you know how I am. Yeah. Great to be here as always. You know, I've, I've got your say, so Easter is tomorrow. How often is, does Easter happen in in March? I mean, I know it's the last day of March, but I, I don't know what the what the calendar what the calendar like how that how that all works. Any anyhow, but I don't know. Are you doing any Easter egg hunts or anything tomorrow? I kind of uh, miss we, the egg hunt. We did an Easter egg hunt last uh, Saturday, and and so um, this is something we prepped my son for because um, the his first real Easter egg hunt was a year ago, and he's two now. Uh, so it was uh, he didn't really know what to do. He was he's a, what is a year and three months, and so he was like. Uh, he's like stumbling around, like picking up, egg. like he picked up one egg and he's like looking at it and like, like Connie, pick up more, pick up more. And he's just looking at it. Like, <laughs> and so he ended up like, and like, he almost went for another egg and like some kid took it from him. It was like three. And so like, he ended up with only four eggs. Um, and so we were like, uh, so my wife and I had like practiced with him. Uh, we're like, we laid eggs all around the house. We're like, Connie, go pick up eggs as quickly as possible. Go, go, go. And so, uh, so yeah, th this, uh, this Easter egg hunt this year, he picked up like 25 eggs or something like that. And he won a, he won a prize. He won a uh, stuffed, uh, animal uh, rabbit. So, um, he did a lot better. So he redeemed himself <laughs> with his uh, second oh, wow, Easter egg hunt. But uh, no, tomorrow, tomorrow, um, no, we're just, uh, going to my, uh, we're going to my sister-in-law's house. It's kind of like the halfway point between, um, our house and my in-laws house. Uh, so, um, yeah, we're going to just celebrate Easter, Easter there. And also, uh, transgender visibility day. We're celebrating that as well. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, and, and that's yeah, the day mean? that, uh, the Easter bunny gets to uh, identify as a hamster. So it's nice. <laughs> so what do you have at, at like an Easter meal? What's the, what's the main course? I feel like most people have the same thing, but I, I want to, I'm curious. It's usually, it's usually ham. Uh, uh yeah that's usually what it is and uh you know i I'm, i'll eat any meat like i know that for thanksgiving some people are like oh turkey sucks but it's tradition i actually love turkey um i love ham i love i love all sorts of meat so uh yeah no, no complaints from me i uh I'll, I'll usually eat anything unless it has like weird sauce on it like like i don't know mustard or or whatever but um yeah I'll, like pl i'll eat anything plain almost yeah, you know, I'm not like a huge turkey fan either, but on Thanksgiving or Christmas, I, I really, I do enjoy that meal, but I usually only enjoy that meal at those times, maybe like literally twice a year, but the Easter meal, and eh, like, I, I can't do, I, I would, I would eat it when I was younger and I would have ham, like the deli ham sandwiches as a kid. Uh, I won't, I won't eat that thick ham anymore. This, I'm, I'm a texture person. There's, it's weird. It's spongy. I, I don't like the taste to the point where I actually wouldn't. Like I wouldn't even eat it at an Easter dinner. I don't know what happened. As you get older, like things things change, and I guess your tastes change. But mm -hmm. I don't really like ham at all anymore. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I. I mean, tastes obviously do change. Like when I was a kid, I hated broccoli. 
Um, I hated tomatoes and like now, like I, I don't mind broccoli. I love tomatoes, you know. So uh, yeah, things definitely do change a lot. Um, I'm not sure but why. Like, but. Yeah, but I feel like I have done, have it the opposite way. Like things I used to, I don't like things I used to like anymore. I did the same because I don't eat seafood either. Like I used to not be a picky eater, and I feel like I've become a pickier a pickier eater. But I don't do any any seafood. I used to ham with a one. There you go, Mike. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. I might eat ham with a one. That's the only exception. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I, I'm definitely down for that. I used to have, eat shrimp sometimes, you know, as long as I could dip it in like spicy, you know, like cocktail sauce or something. But then one day I just started thinking about it, and I, I threw it away, and I said I, I can't do it anymore. I don't like seafood because I think it smells weird. I, I, I've never encountered like been around any seafood that didn't smell weird. And I know people always say, "Well, if it smells bad, then it's not," you know, or they say the good seafood won't smell bad. I've never smelled any seafood that to me like didn't smell bad. So I, I just can't get past it. How, how do you feel? On, on, on I, I I really can't smell anything, which is weird. Like. Um... And this has been like my whole life. I, I, my wife would be like, "Oh, what's that smell?" I'm like, I don't smell anything. Like, this is like our whole marriage. And like, she always, it was, I was like, "Oh, she, she's like, she's like, do you smell that?" I'm like, "No." She's like, "Oh, you can't smell anything anyway." Like, it's, it's like yeah. she's like knows knows by now. I, I had the weakest sense of smell like of anyone I know. Really? Um, yeah, I just can't. Or I can't really smell anything. It's been my whole life. It's not recent. So, um, wow. yeah. So that I guess that doesn't bother me. But um, I used to. Um, well, back when I used to go to Red Lobster often, um, I used to get as a kid, I, I used to get uh, fried shrimp and then I used to get asked for more. And it's funny because like one time uh, we went because we used to go like for everyone's birthday and I, I went um, and I saw the menu and uh, instead of just fried shrimp, it said Walt's favorite fried shrimp. And like that added the option for F for half a dozen extra. I'm like, as a, I was like a 10 year old, I'm like, wait, is this because of me? Because I kept ordering like extra fried shrimp. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, I don't know, it'd be funny if it was, but I, I highly doubt it. They named it after a 10 year old. But um, so that, that's what I always get at uh, Red Lobster. Well, I, I don't I don't go anymore. But um, back when I used to go, I used to eat that all the, all the time. So I was uh, Walt's favorite fried shrimp at Red Lobster is the best. That, that was the name of the menu item. Yes, it still is. It's, it's, OK, OK. <laughs> I feel like there's there's at least a chance that it was inspired by you. It's it's a non zero. <laughs> it's a I'm being serious. Yeah. What are the? It was it was exactly what you used to order too. Like just yeah, an yeah. extra. Yeah. I thought you were going to say that they like were going to ban you or something for like <laughs> eating them out of house and home with the fried shrimp or something. <laughs> well, they could they could do that too. I don't know. Maybe well, they. I don't know. Maybe I, I increased business, but you know, didn't yeah. eat them out too too much. So. <laughs> Eat them out of house and home too much. So you're you're a, you're a Red Lobster celebrity. I guess so. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I don't, uh, but I don't go anymore. So uh, not not so much, not so much anymore. Well, you know, your 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 name lives on forever on the menu. So let's <laughs> get some comments going. <laughs> That's true. All right, uh, Patrick asking, have you ever heard of slash read Stormlight Archive series? I have read the first two books in similar vibes to Game of Thrones. Massive World, Magic, and Characters. Four books out now with plan 10 in total. Well, I, I hope that they release those planned books as opposed to Game of Thrones. Um, I have not heard of Stormlight Archive, but I, I'll check it out. I usually don't have time to read. Um, outside of my own books, um, I haven't read anything. And I only say my books because I have to proofread. But um, <laughs> I just I just don't have time to read because, like, you know, with two kids now and I'm running the site and, like, I just... I barely have time to sleep, but I, when I go to Vegas, I have time to read by the pool. So I usually take like one book. So maybe this will be it, the Stormlight Archive. So I checked that out. Thanks, thanks, Patrick. Um, I, but I haven't heard of it though. No I bunny, haven't. no bunny ears. Uh, I don't think I have. Think bunny about ears. it. We could have been festive, you know. <laughs> uh, I think I have bunny wolf. Ears. I think I have wolf ears upstairs. My my son had them. Um, well, they're well, they're in something we call baby jail, which is uh this like big, uh playpen we have set up. Um, and we used to put my son there um, just to, you know, when we're like busy and like we needed him to stay there. And then eventually, like one time I was making dinner and I turned around and like he's out of baby jail. I'm like, how did you get out? And like uh, I eventually saw him like climbing out. This guy, my, my son climbs everything like he climbs up onto like high countertops. I don't oh, know how God. he does it. I, I don't know how he does it. It's insane. He just it's going to be like a mountain climber one day. It's crazy. Or, or, or he's training for Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yeah, well, I hope I hope, I hope he's smart enough not to go through the the direct path like we talked right. about. Right, and, and he'll, he'll learn the strategy from you. So I mean, I, right. I can tell already, just based on that, what you're telling me that he could win. 
<laughs> I, yeah, I think he'd be the betting favorite if uh, if he yeah. were there. So I, I hope they, I hope they do. First of all, it'd be great to to bet on it. But second, um, I, I hope they they remake the series, uh, like update yeah. it, like make it more modernized. I think that'd be, that'd be awesome. You could you could live bet the it's like before you know blue barracudas are eight to one and yeah right it'd be awesome to live bet I'd be would be so fun oh to I'd, I'd definitely do that yeah um, oh my god that would be something and people Chris would do is, it what did you say I said and people would do it I guarantee you they would uh, I would <laughs> I mean people I would um, Chris <laughs> asking what percentage does the greediest company in the world take from super chats that's a good question actually look that up myself because I know. That um that we got nine eleven on Thursday from John Sanders, so it's looking like so it's hard to tell because uh this does not include um this is not to include YouTube ads. Which I, I, so on Thursday it says we made seven dollars and thirty seven cents, um and John gave a nine eleven, uh, but I don't know what we made from regular YouTube ads. I'll, I'll assume like fifty cents. So out of nine sixty one, uh they gave us seven thirty seven. So they they take about twenty five percent, which is like not great, but we are using their platform for free. So, you know, I, it's, at least it's not 50%, you know, they, they yeah. could do that. And people would still use uh, YouTube. So, um, you know, they kind of have us yeah, by the balls. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, they have us by the balls, but you know, it could 25% is not terrible, I suppose. Yeah, um, so. Bagley says Easter can be anywhere between March 22nd and April mm. 25th, depending on moon cycles and stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. I have, I had no idea because it always changes. Uh, I wish it could be like Christmas where it's the same day. Um, but I don't, I don't know how it works, but, um, uh, Chris, either. yeah, Chris says would be nice if we could PayPal from Ben, no, you hundred percent, uh, no PayPal t- takes. Um, so our, um, our premium subscription is 79, 7 a month and I get seven twenty two of it. Uh, so it's it's better it's better than YouTube, but they still take a percentage. Um, so this companies <laughs> definitely take stuff. They all take stuff. Um, Patrick says also find a question of the night. Have either of you seen the Three Body Problem show? I read the book and wasn't too crazy about it, but excited to check out the show. Uh, no, I want to check out the show. I mean, it's, it's all over Netflix. If like if you go to Netflix, it's like the first thing that pops up. Um, the 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 actor who plays Sam on Game of Thrones is in it. Um, so oh, I'm really? excited. Yeah, I'm excited oh, okay. to see it. I heard um, I heard good things about it. Um, I, I heard it's it's like not great, but it's good. Uh, it's just kind of like um, like there's some interesting parts of the show for, from what I heard. There's some interesting parts of the show, and then it'll cut to like something like irre- irrelevant. It's kind of boring, and then they'll they'll go back to something interesting. Like they're kind of like all over the place from from uh, what I heard, but um, it does sound good. And like the person who reviewed it uh, had a high opinion of it, so. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. This is, it's the next thing I want to watch. I'll have to check that out as well. I, I, I think I did see that on there, but I haven't been on Netflix in a little, in a little bit, actually. Yeah. John says uh, one to four chance of Easter in March. Yeah. Um, really? Just one in four? It, it seems, I mean, I, I believe that, I believe that, but it just, it seems like it only happens once in a, in a while, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, really I feel like, like I feel like I haven't seen it too much, but yeah. Um, I mean, I'll I'll trust you. Uh, I'll trust you guys in saying. Yeah, I mean, these these could be made up stats for all we know. <laughs> you know, like it's just just reading off the screen. And like and someone could be like, oh, it's one in ten chance. I'm like, oh, okay, I believe that too. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Chris says Millen loves all sorts of meats too. Yes, just depends on where it goes. You know. Um, <laughs> Bagley says, just look it up after tomorrow. Easter isn't going to clash with Trans Awareness Day until 2086. Um, well, what if they what if they move it? <laughs> you know, um, then then it'll it'll clash again. Uh, but yeah, that was that's quite the firestorm on YouTube. I uh, sorry on Twitter today that everyone was <laughs> complaining about. It was, it was pretty funny. Um, Sue so says, "Thank uh, that's good, Bagley. Uh, thankful I would be dead before 2086. Well, you never know. With today's uh, medical technology, you might you might uh, live to see that. So, uh, happy uh, happy yeah, Trans Awareness Day plus Easter in 2086. What do you say? So, or you might be cryogenically frozen. You never know what could happen sure. between now and then. <laughs> sure. Remember Total Recall? I don't know if you saw that movie, but oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Mike says uh, same here. Um, uh, Carbon, says, carbon seafood uh, is delicious out of here with the seafood i can't i can't I, hang i i said i said to recall it's demolition man sorry uh demolition man's the one that he was crying to show first and his is uh sylvester stone and wesley snipes 
Uh, that's what I was thinking. Oh, Austin Powers, they did that in too. Okay, yeah. <laughs> PVG says, love you all. I love you too. Uh, Mike says, uh, um, <laughs> who wouldn't love you, princess? <laughs> Mike says, I'm on a seafood diet. I see food and I have to eat it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's my that, life too. Yeah, that's that's my that's my kind of diet. Um, although Kenny announced, I don't know if you heard the Kenny announced on Wednesday that he's on a carnivore diet. It just only meat. Um Oh, I thought you said a carnival diet, like with clowns and like <laughs> it's all funnel cake. <laughs> like you yeah. only eat funnel cakes and hot dogs. <laughs> that would be awesome, honestly. Oh, that would be cool. I haven't had a funnel cake in a while. <laughs> the carnival diet. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um Bagley says they're not gonna move it. It was first celebrated in 2009 and it stayed on March 31st the whole time. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, but, <laughs> but uh, like theoretically they could, cause it's not like, it's not like, uh, it, like there's no reason it should be March 31st, right? They're like, you know, Christmas falls on December 25th for a reason, right? Like, like there's no, like they could move it theoretically if they wanted to, like, uh, I'm not, not saying that they will, but they, they could, there's no rule that says they don't have to, like they can't. I'm still over here laughing about the carnival diet. What else? What else would, would that include? I mean, do you enjoy a good funnel? I haven't had a funnel cake in a long time. Yeah, me neither. Um, I mean, yeah, hot dogs. You have your cotton candy. Um, yeah, sure. Like any any sort of soda would work, right? Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure people could think of whatever, but yeah, it would it would be a fun diet. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if, if it would help you lose weight. But. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't, think would, you know, I don't know if it'd be good for your health, but you no. know, you ever play whack a mole? Yeah, uh, yeah, not not recently. Okay, <laughs> I haven't either. But back in the day, when I was a kid, this is a true story. I was I was the whack mole. So I had family in Bethany Beach and Rehoboth Beach in Delaware, and we used to go every summer as kids to see my 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 family and stay for you know a handful of days. And they had this place on Rehoboth Beach called Funland, and it was, you know they had some rides like a haunted mansion, and and they had you know some games. And I would always I would play whack a mole, and it would be a full table, like sixteen people playing at like twelve and thirteen years old. Like I almost never lost, I almost never lost. I was so good at whack a mole, and I don't know why, hmm. but I used to like come home all the time with like those giant prizes and stuff. I'm I must be pretty good at these games. I was telling you I got the ring ring toss, and now whack a mole. Maybe maybe it's because I'm on the carnival diet. <laughs> oh, what about oh, what about the uh the the, the claw grabber do you, do you, i have uh, my i had my heyday with with the claw with the claw game so I definitely did so I, I i i don't mean to call you out. i i think that every person who says they've done well with the claw is a liar i, I i've never seen I, anyone win it never in my oh, life oh, i've never seen oh, anyone win the claw oh, and every oh, time oh. every time in, in our arcade everyone's like oh, i'm the best with the claw I, i'm not gonna win the win this prize and they do it and they never win Never in my life have I seen anyone do it. Oh, okay. Never. Now let me be. Let me clarify. I said I had my heyday with it. So right. That's, you know, relative to, to what I, I mean. That's I what everyone have... says. They're like, I used to be good at this. I'm like, no, I've never seen anyone win this ever, ever. I definitely, I've definitely won. I remember my my buddy Jason and I. We were really good at it. And I, I remember a couple times he got. I think this happened twice. He got two prizes and one. And he was on a hot streak like no other because we were laughing so hard we couldn't believe it. And I think he, he, we must have hit it like five or six times in a row. Where we're, I mean, this isn't in, in like over the course of a couple of days. This is many years. We're not like hunting out claw games or anything at age 30, 37. But I don't know. Like some people say that those things are programmed for like every one in 11 tries or whatever it is. It'll clamp down hard enough to pick it up. But, there, but there's also too many – I feel like that can't be because there's other variables that could influence – like for, for a prize – like if a prize is only supposed to be one, let's just say one out of ten times for argument's sake. Like you can maybe hook something by like the tag or, or, or you know, you can get a winner when you when you think – when it wasn't programmed to do so. I think there's some skill to it is what I'm trying to say. I, I It's all uh, – it's rigged, man. It, it doesn't – you can't win. Um, I, I don't know. You say you won. I My friends have all said they won. My brother-in-law said – my brother-in-law Jimmy said, "I'm the best at this ever." Uh, okay, I'm like, all right. So last, we we're at Rehoboth Beach, by the way. You, you said Rehoboth Beach. We we're there, um, and uh, he, he was like, he's like, I, I'm the I'm the master at the claw game. I'm like, okay. Um, he tried like ten times and won anything. I'm like, like this is this is all a scam. I've never seen anyone win, and everyone like I feel like, I, you know what I think this is? I think this is a Mandela effect, and I think people like think they won in the past, but they haven't really. 
And like, they just think they won for some reason. Um, but I, I feel like I'm the only one who's like, who knows the truth behind the claw games. Whereas like, you're, no one, suggesting, no one wins. <laughs> you're suggesting that no one has ever won. And I'm just remembering it incorrectly. Yes. I, can, I could prove you. I, okay. I can prove you wrong because I <laughs> want to, when I was in, uh, I, I was with my buddy for two weeks on a national guard tour. This is 2007. And we, and we won, like we were just like traveling around and like, we saw like different crane games and stuff in gas stations or whatever. And we won three stuffed animals, or I think it was four stuffed animals. And we have a recording of me doing an impromptu puppet show with these stuffed animals. There's no way that we would have brought stuffed animals with us on this trip unless we won them on the crane game during the trip. So I think that's enough evidence to, to prove that people can win the crane game. No, I need to see it on video because for all I know, you, know you could what? be you could you could be brainwashed by Big Claw and like you would like you have these false memories of you winning, but really someone gave you these stuffed animals, so you made a video. And so this is all propaganda for you to tell people on this show that you won in the past. So people <laughs> keep playing the claw games. Trust me, I'm I'm the one who sees the truth here. <laughs> yeah, I actually work for the, for the company that makes the machines. <laughs> no, you were you were brainwashed by them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even realize I work there. Oh, you need Carmen. You want proof of the puppet show? I got bad news for you. It ain't G-rated. So, <laughs> oh man, <What laughs> there's, is... <laughs> there's, there's there's profane language in it. So I don't. Oh, know. I thought I thought you were <laughs> maybe doing some nefarious things. These. <laughs> 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 well, once you escape, once you escape the claw game, I mean, it's a free for all. I mean, can you imagine if you're one of the? I mean, you're over here saying that no one's ever won it. All those toys are trapped in there forever, and yeah. these suddenly got free. They're probably going wild. It's no, like it's a, like, like a, that's like Toy Story, and they're actually yeah, like real, yeah. Well, it's like uh, a <laughs> on some level, you know. <laughs> man, I, I again, I don't think I don't think anyone's ever won this thing. Um, so. Uh, and I know you're going to say I won. And like, here we have another comment here. Um, Chris says, my grandfather is very skilled at the claw game. Only one I've personally witnessed. See, I, I don't right, believe I mean, this. We've got, our, we've got eyewitness testimony I, here. From no, I don't, I don't believe it, Chris. I, I think you were brainwashed. I think like you have these false memories implanted by Big, big Claw. Um, and uh, you just uh, you re remember uh, incorrectly. So, so, but you would sooner believe that I, yeah, Bagley said, um, thank you, Bagley. I am the master of the ring toss game. That's what I'm about to say. So you, you <laughs> believe that I won the ring toss game with the with the whole hidden camera bit sooner than I won the claw game? I feel like the ring toss game is so much harder. I would just I, think you would doubt that story before you doubt, doubt the claw game. But I've, I've seen people win the ring toss, but I've never seen anyone win, win in a claw oh, game. Oh, really? I've never in my life. I've never seen it. And and it's it's not like one. I've seen it once or twice. I. I I've seen people, I've seen so many people go, I'm the best at this. And it, like everyone I know is like, I'm the best at this. My wife is saying like, oh, I'm really good at this. And she's never won. My brother-in-law, I'm the, I'm the master at this. I've never, never seen a win. It's, um, it's a skill my, that's, that's, that's it's, re, it's mandatory for it to be embellished when you talk about it. It's a, that's a requirement of bragging about that skill. <laughs> like if you won a couple times, like you already know that's automatically like more than anyone else. That's that's enough, John Sanders. John, John, John knows the okay. truth. John's like me; he knows the truth. <laughs> well, I'm I'm just saying, if this is what I'm going to do, if I start, I mean, I hardly go out in public anymore. Let's be honest. But when I do, if I if I see a claw game anywhere, I'm going to play it and I'm going to record it, and then if I if I win, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna post it on your on your Twitter. Is that what was that what would it, what would it take? Would the video proof do it? How do I know it's not doctored? <laughs> You, have, you could you oh, could generate an AI video video of uh, someone winning claw game on these days. Yeah, but what if I okay? I'll turn the camera to me. I'll be like, hey, it's it's me, it's Quacky, <laughs> and then here I am playing the crane game. And then you think maybe I got like soup or deep faked or something, somebody else. <laughs> but then the hardest part, I got to go through all that and then win. Right, it's a tall order in itself. Right, I'm gonna feel what? real stupid in the Denny's lobby, you know, making a video of me. <laughs> <laughs> Just as you uh, drain all your money away, as uh, yeah. Sluice says, put in good money to try to win junk in a rigged game. <laughs> Suckers born every minute. <laughs> <laughs> PT so Barnum, true. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, true. PT Barnum is smiling. Oh, so geez, true. Uh, Slu yeah. also says, uh, oh, go ahead. What did you say? No, no, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was going to read some comments. I don't know if we had more on this claw game uh, topic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe we. Other topics. 
Uh, Slu says, uh, Grizzlies, I was mowing my lawn, checked the score first time, it was 87-47. It was quite, yeah, it was quite the, uh, quite the slaughter tonight. <laughs> that, I love how, like, the, Grizz, the Grizzlies are competitive with, like, Denver and Golden State and Sacramento, and, like, they just can't compete with Orlando playing on no rest. It was, it was embarrassing. At least, uh, at least Zion Williamson hit the under tonight, so at least we won that, uh, but that was, that was an ugly showing. Um, uh, What's... what did you say? Yeah, you yeah. No, you were, you were going to say something. Oh, I was gonna say, what are some of the some of the worst uh, losses like you you've taken? Like, like as far as like like you took a team and they like I would say like I took Denver plus six this past season. That was the game against Miami. That was Miami. that seventy to twenty game. Yeah, yeah, I had that too. Um, I thought you meant like personally. I, I once played in a in a summer league basketball league, um, and uh, I, I don't know if I told the story on here before, but like. There, there was an A league and a B league, and like the B league was just like normal dudes. Like A league were like uh, former college basketball players, um, and they're like people from like Temple, like like Philly schools, like Temple LaSalle, Drexel, Villanova. Like that, they were like not not like superstars on those teams, but like role players on those teams. They're just not good enough to make the NBA, but like they were there in these in, in these like Philly leagues and whatever. And like some of them would would join these leagues, and so. Um, there were like 11 teams that joined that signed up for the B league. And so the guy in charge was like, Oh, I'll just put one of these teams in the A league. And guess, guess whose team was put into the A league. Um, so we had, uh, we had, we had so many lopsided games uh, and like our top, our tallest guy was like six, three. And like, we, we played, we played against teams that like the shortest guy was like six, three. It was so, so hard. Oh, God. We, we lost two games. One game uh, we lost 69 to 10. And we lost oh. another game, seventy nine to twenty. Um, it was just so bad. That sixty nine to ten game, we were down ten to eight. We just got outscored fifty nine to two. <laughs> the remainder of the game. And, and we had uh, my so my friend Josh has uh, is, is been uh, my friend for since we were five. Um, he was also on the team, and he was a film major in college. And this is, is during college years. Um, and, uh, he had, for some reason he was trying to make a documentary. And so his, uh, his like partner in class was making a documentary about our basketball team. And so like, <laughs> so they made this documentary about, about this game and like the game they recorded, we lost 69 to 10. And, oh my God. <laughs> so he was like, this is, this is the day, uh, basketball got set, set back 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> It was so horrible. Like we, there's, we had no chance to get these against these guys. <laughs> oh my god, that's right, Chris. That's right, Chris. Uh, says, uh, that's the worst part. Low quality, low quality stuffed animals in those machines. Yes. You, you know what? You know what that reminds me of? I had I had this friend. He went to Temple University, and and you know, like Temple. Uh, for those who don't know, it's 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 very close to the like what would you say like inner city Philadelphia, I guess. And yeah, uh, you, so get, you get shot if you're down there. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard it's, it's it, it can be a bit of a dangerous area. I've never been down there myself. But my, my, my buddy, it's, went... it's, it's like the heart of the, the the ghetto in North Philly. It's horrible. Oh really? Oh yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know it was that bad, but anyhow, so my buddy went to college there, and uh, he was just like went to a random park with some of his friends. He's like 21, 22 years old, and these like 10 year old they're playing basketball like at a park, like at a public park, and these kids come up to them. They're like 10 years old. They said. 10, 11 years old. They're like, you guys want to want to play, like play basketball. He's like 20, 21 year old college kids. These 10 year old kids are coming up and saying, you mm -hmm. want to play? They're like, okay. And I'll never forget the way my friend Josh said it. He just goes, every shot went in. Mm. The 10 year olds kicked their ass. Like, it was <laughs> the way he, he was so serious. He goes, every shot went in. Like they, they never missed. They made every single shot. Like how embarrassing does that have to be though? Like those kids are probably just out there all the time and just, just a, a, an amazing skill level, you know. Yeah, I mean, and, I had I had the opposite it, it, it happen. Would be to me. like humiliating as a twenty-one year old to lose a basketball game to a bunch of ten-year-olds, you know. I mean, if they get lucky and hit every shot, I guess. But like, no, I had the opposite happen to me when um my friends and I were like we're sixteen or seventeen. We joined the gym for the first time and we're we're just shooting around and like these three older guys who were like all in their fifties. Like they're like, oh, you want to play three on three? And like uh, we looked at them, we're like, ah, oh, we these guys can barely move. Like <laughs> we're, we're gonna kick their ass. Yeah. Um, and uh, they, but they had played play together in the, on the same team in like rec leagues for like thirty years. And so they they 
they set like the best picks. They they knew what to, what everyone what each other was doing so perfectly. They would hit every shot because like they're they're fifty year olds who like were shooting basketball for a long time. Like they they destroyed us because like just their fundamentals were just so much better. Uh, yeah. So um, and I just became friends with them uh, for for a while. So um, yeah, it was. How good were you at basketball? Like when you played in those, because I know you've mentioned you played in a lot of rec leagues. Like, what were are yeah. you like the point guard? Are you like, can you hit a three? Are you just a good like mid range? What do you do? Like, what's your I was I was say? basically three and D sort of guy. Um, like if I if I got hot with the three, like I was I, I like I once scored uh, sixteen points in a game. Like it was just like I hit oh. like I hit like three or four threes or something like that, and then two two pointers. Um, but like you know, if I was if I was cold and. I, I, wouldn't do anything so uh but but defensively i was i would i'd love to play defense more than anything in basketball because i yeah. always i was like to like i was like i, I like i love like boxing like like people out and like just just grabbing rebounds like that's what i love to do so um but yeah i would just basically stand in the corner if someone gave me the ball i'd shoot a three or i'd like set picks for people stuff like that okay um they called yeah. you they called you walt the wall <laughs> walt the wall, yeah. walt the right. wall. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I, I, and I, I would usually play good D unless it was against the A League people, <laughs> just, and I was like uh, I was like six inches smaller than the guys I was guarding. Yeah. <laughs> there was I could I was good. I think I told you this. I think it was on a show maybe, but whatever. I'll I'll get into it. Uh, I was really good at shooting free throws. I could hit a three three as well, but I won the the dare foul shot competition, the dare program at school. Mm. They only had the competition at my school two years, and both years I won the, the foul shot competition. So nice. I was I, I went out undefeated on untied. I could I could shoot free throws, and I'll never forget. I only played up until ninth grade at Bass Lake for the for my school because I ended up giving it up for music and acting. <laughs> but I remember we we played our our rival, and our coach hated this other team like real. And I didn't understand how much he hated them until like he came into the locker room screaming before the game started. I remember I was like, oh my god, like I didn't realize it was it ran this deep. And we, we ended up winning the game by four. And I, I had two points in the in the whole game. Like I was I was off the bench like role player. I scored I averaged like maybe three points a game. And I only and the two points I scored were free throws. It was a close game. <laughs> and my coach, I'm on the line before I shoot the first two, like the first one. And my coach is screaming at me, prove your manhood. <laughs> prove your manhood. Sunk them, sunk them both. Nice. And, and here I am. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell shoot you what, free I never, throws, I, hitting winning claw I never, games. <laughs> I never got nervous with the free throws. I don't know. I could. I, I could always. But that yeah. that was kind of a lot of pressure to say. Like a how old was I? Fourteen. But I, I mean, I guess is that all it takes too to prove that. So to show you how like little I did offensively is <laughs> outside of shooting threes, I would uh I never attempted a free throw in like three years, or three or four. I think it was four years of rec ball, um, rec league ball. I just never never uh, went to the free throw line although like once i attempted a three and like a guy like knocked me over i like fell down and like the ref just didn't call the a foul i was so irate <laughs> I, was like, I was like dude like where's the foul like i just got it got tackled <laughs> like what are you just what, not watching yeah I'll, I'll tell you what Walt. from you like the skills you're describing I, I would think you know if you didn't tell me the player name you just told me the the skills it sounds like steph curry over there steph curry three three and two <laughs> Well, no, I, I, I don't know, like who a three and D guy was. Maybe like Robert Ori, but not clutch. You know, um, not that like I was never in a position to be clutch. So I, I don't know. Right, right. But some, some like just, that. Yeah. You know. I was just thinking of Robert Ori recently. Do you think he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame? I definitely do. I definitely oh, yeah. think he should. Be. Yeah, yeah, I think so for, for sure. Remember that game five in the two thousand five finals uh, when he was on the Spurs against the Pistons? Yeah. He he! What did he score? I think like twenty one or twenty two points in the fourth quarter in overtime. Yeah, he was. And yeah, big big shot, Bob. He always come clutch. That that yeah. that three that he hit. Oh, I mean, yeah. There and there are so many of them, but that one that that he hit that I'm talking about in that game uh, in that game five. I remember like Hubie Brown before, like right before during the timeout, he goes, "Just don't let like don't let Ori get the ball." It's like, yeah, like your coach Larry Brown here for the Pistons. Like, hey, I don't have to say this, right, guys? But you know, like, don't leave him open. You're, <laughs> you're aware of his his body of work. And he was the inbounder. He threw it to Ginobili. They double teamed and went right back. And I just remember it was Al Michaels and Hubie Brown. <laughs> and Al Michaels is like, or he goes, oh, oh, Robert, or like they couldn't believe it. It's like, how could you leave him open? <laughs> Nailed it. The guy was, oh, 
I love Robert Ory. One of the He's one so of the good. seven seven rings, two with the Rockets, three with the uh, the three Pete Lakers, and two with the Spurs. Yep. Yeah, he killed think, the Sixers in that final that we talked about the other night. Um, yeah, yeah. He was, he was, yeah, he should be in the Hall of Fame, no doubt. He's so good. Um, let's I, uh, I let's get so. to some more comments. Uh, Chris says, "Pretty sure trans awareness day can identify with whatever they exactly. do prefers." <laughs> there you go, uh, for sure. I, I think you're right about that. Uh, Bagley says, "As far as I know, there is no historical significance to March 31st. So it was just chosen arbitrarily." Yeah. Yeah, I and it was chosen arbitrarily to annoy people every uh, what is it um, every eighty six years or whatever I don't know how, like how often uh, it falls on Easter <laughs> people will complain about it. Um, uh, we saw that uh, Chris says he was also a mechanic. He's talking about his grandfather. He's some is a mechanic on a construction okay. equipment and was very high hand eye coordination. Okay, again, I'd have to see proof of this. Um, we should we uh, should we should get like ESPN or something to host like a claw game tournament. I saw that they were they were doing um, bean or cornhole, I guess they call it the beanbag toss game that you see at the mm -hmm. um, tailgates. They were they were they were filming that they were, had uh, a broadcast of that. They should do like a, a, a claw game one. Um, you, you think people would come out for it? I bet they would. <laughs> see, everyone loses. Sure. And then, and then and then the the fraud would get exposed. <laughs> but by the way, speaking of claw games, I, I was I was going to mention this. Um, in Rehoboth Beach that you were talking about, um, there is a claw game outside of one of the arcades, and the only prize in it is ketchup packets. I posted this in Jerks of the Week, and it was really? like 20, 25 cents, and you can win ketchup packets. And I'm like, what kind of scam is this? Like, you could go to a McDonald's, go to their condiment section, and just take some ketchup packets and just leave. Like you don't even have to pay for them. Like why, uh, <laughs> like, why are you paying for ketchup? This I is a Robot beach. Me. Anyone who's ever going to go into Robot beach, you can see this. It's like in the middle of the boardwalk. I've, I haven't been there in a long time, but I went there every summer, like my entire childhood. And I, I, I never remember seeing that, but I mean, I really haven't been there much in the last 20 years or so, like out, out to that area, maybe a handful of times. So maybe that's something new, or maybe I just never knew about it, but I used to go all the time. I've never, I've never seen that though. Um, it could be new. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've only gone there once in my oh. life and uh, it was this past summer. So, uh, well, well, how much ketchup did you win? Oh, I didn't, I didn't play it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> You did. Come on. You you didn't have any. I don't know. I don't I refuse to play the claw game because you can't. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were going to, would it maybe be the ketchup packet one? You can never you can never have too no, many. Cause, <laughs> cause why would you pay for it? It's free. <laughs> I'm not, I love ketchup. I'm not gonna pay for it because you can get it for free. You never like, know. You might be somewhere and all of a sudden, like, man, I wish I had those that packet. I actually have so many ketchup packets in my house just because like I save them all. I don't know why. I just like we have ketchup bottles. Like every time they give us a ketchup packet, whenever we go to like Wendy's or uh, or Chick Fil A, like I always have these ketchup packets. I just put them in the fridge, and like I just never use them. They, they're just like I have like thousands of these yeah, that, things. That happens. That happens a lot to me too. You know, I don't even really if I get fast food or something. Like I don't really even do ketchup, like with the fries. I'll just kind of eat, eat them by themselves. Uh, that, I don't. Like maybe understand. if I have like some sort of like like maybe every now and then I'll dip them in ranch or something. But I just don't enjoy the ketchup enough. Every now and then I'll do it, but I just don't even don't even bother with it. What about you? I'm I'm the opposite. I I need ketchup. If I don't have ketchup, I'm not gonna eat the fries. Um, oh like really? I, oh yeah. And same thing with burgers. I, I I need ketchup on everything. Like, and I, I said this to Kenny on Wednesday. Um, whenever I get a burger, I lift up the top bun, put ketchup in. I lift up the flip it over. I lift up the bottom bun put ketchup in and then if there's two patties i split the burger apart and then put ketchup in the middle oh i didn't i didn't <laughs> know it. you were i don't know if that makes me insane but <laughs> no 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 that. it's just that's just the way that's just the way you like it wow i guess i'm after hearing this i'm surprised at, at you know how judgmental you were of the, of the ketchup crane game so i was just surprised you didn't say <laughs> no but I'm, no i'm judgmental on them making you pay for something that's free <laughs> <I> just <laughs> I don't, well, I didn't. I, I'm I'm like that with um, like with tomatoes, like like a sandwich, like like it makes or break, tomatoes make or break the sandwich. But like I I can do like I, I want the ketchup on the burger, but I can and I'll enjoy it on the fries. But I'd rather just not bother open up the packets. It doesn't to to 
you know, push it out of there. I'd rather just like, whatever. I'll just eat them plain. Do you, do you, I knew a guy once that he would eat all his fries first before he ate the burger. Um, no, nah, that's weird. Yeah. I thought, I thought that was, was interesting. Do you, have you ever heard of, of anyone doing that? They would, cause I think their reasoning was, well, like they're still hot or something. Um, no, I, I feel like they compliment the burger. Like I, I'm not Agreed. a huge fry fan by themselves, but like if it compliments something, you know, like either a burger or hot dogs, you know, just makes it better. But like by, it, by themselves, I just, I don't know. Unless it's uh, like yeah, it I, cheese I, on it or something. I, I thought that was, that was unique too. But then, you know, they were like, Oh, like they kind of made it seem like a lot of people do that. So I, I started thinking, you know, maybe I was unaware. So I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, cause I thought that was strange, but I, and I never heard of that before. So, yeah. But impossible Just, for Walt. Sorry. Uh, well, uh, hold on. Um, oh, I'm sorry. sorry, I'm jumping comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. John says they had that candy claw game, which is like putting bumpers in a bowling lane. That's yeah, that's something I need. Um, <laughs> I can't. I can't. I'm the worst bowler of all time. I can't. I can't like get score higher than sixty. I don't know how people do it. This is not like the claw game. I've seen people bowl well. I just don't know how to like. I don't know, like maybe I was taught wrong. I just like it always goes in the gutter for me. I don't know how like to roll it straight. Like it either like goes super slowly and just slowly rolls into the gutter, or like I roll it right into the gutter, and it like it's just like like sheer luck if I hit like a pin. Um, Even as an adult? Oh yeah, I can't do it. I don't know how people do it. I don't, I don't like I was taught incorrectly. I don't know. Like I, I, I don't know. Like interesting. I, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a hard. I'm the worst. I, I if I score over sixty, it's a miracle. Holy cow. I mean, I would say usually like with, I mean, I can't even tell you the last time I went bowling, but usually I'm at least around a hundred. I would say, I think the best I ever bowled, and this was eons ago, like 165 or something. Yeah. No, but, I, I, no, I, I, I actually once, good, I once bowled at 123. I remember it. Cause I was so shocked. Cause like it was all luck. And then uh, the next gate, we like played another game after that. The next game, I got like 45. <laughs> that's like, oh, this is more like it. <laughs> so like average it out to 80 or something. Like that's that's pretty close to where I am usually. That's that's really interesting. I, I'm, I'm just surprised to hear it's that, you know, maybe you're just, you just happen to not be good at it, but I'm surprised to hear it's like, it's, it's that low. What do you think? Like the, the mechanics of it or like the, 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 I don't, the I just don't know. I don't know. I like, maybe I'm just rolling it wrong or something. I don't know. I, I I got, I'd have to be right. It'd be like, it'd be like playing basketball and you're shooting left-handed, even though you're right-handed. Maybe that's, that's what I'm doing. I, mm. It's not like I'm bowling left-handed. I'm just saying like, maybe right. it's uh, like, like maybe I'm just like the motion is wrong or something. I don't, I don't know. I just, it always goes in the gutter. Like I, I can't, well, Chris is saying I, I need, well, or no, who said John, um, I need those bumpers. <laughs> like if I had those bumpers, I could score a hundred, I think maybe. <laughs> well, I'm I'm just kind of I'm just kind of surprised to hear that because you're I don't know like did, did you ever do did you ever play Wii bowling Yeah, I think Bagley's just mentioned there in Wii Sport. Yeah, Wii Sports bowling. Uh, yeah, I played Wii bowling. I was not. How did you do either. in Wii bowling? That was bad. Really? Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> Does someone have to see it? I haven't bowled in forever though. Last time I bowled was uh geez it was like 11 years ago it was uh no it was uh yeah i think it was i think it was the winter of 2013 because i was dating i know i was dating emily at the time um but yeah we had we had a power outage like the the bowling alley alley had a power outage and i was just i was just hanging out with friends i, I just like bowled one or two games so it's mostly there to hang out with friends um but mm -hmm. that, that was the last time i bowled really um Wow, as someone who hasn't bowled in probably just as long, could I be your bowling coach? <laughs> sure. I mean, you lived in Florida, gonna, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know how it's gonna work. But. We're gonna get your average over a hundred, man. Well, I would love to hit a hundred. <laughs> got average. I'd love to hit a hundred for the second time in my life. Do you remember? Did you ever have a Virtual Boy? Do you remember Virtual Boy? It was like the, the red so thing. It wasn't like a big, big console. I would say like late nineties, it came out. Yeah, the the red the red thing. You mean? Yeah, yeah, the red lines. And I rented mean, it from Blockbuster. Yeah, I rented it from Blockbuster, and I'm like, this is this is horrible. So I just never bought it. I played it a little bit. We we had one when I was younger, and I played Warrior Land. I thought Warrior Land was cool. Also, That's I the think one that was I like, played. yeah, yeah. I think it was like the first game where like the villain was, you know, maybe like the first game where Warrior was the main character that you can control. So I was kind of intrigued as a kid by that. But then they had this other game called Nestor's Funky Bowling. 
You ever played Nestor's Funky Bowling? Nestor was um, he was one of the characters from Nintendo Power. Um, that's right. That's that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah, uh, I, I love I love that magazine. Oh my god, I've I have the original in in rap. Um, I have, really? I have all, oh yeah, I have all the original ones, including the uh, the controversial one where the Dracula's head was being held by Simon Belmont. Um, yeah, wow. I, I have all those. The I used to live. I used to. <laughs> Uh, read that religiously. I used to mail them <laughs> like nonsense. I used to like, like, oh, wow. uh, I'd be like, Oh, I found this trick in this game. And like, I'd mail them as if like I was the only one who knew it. And like, um, uh, uh yeah, so, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I, I read it too, but I never like try to submit anything. That's that's really that's really cool. I voted for all the, the top 30. Like, I was, oh, dude, I was so into video games. In fact, like, one of my friends bet me. I was, I was like, I was, I was like so obsessed. One of my friends bet me. They're like, I bet you can't stop playing video games for a week. I'm like, okay, I'll take it. And like, I just broke it. I just lost that night. It's just like, <laughs> it's like I have to play video games. That's all I, <laughs> I um, I've been I've been that way lately. With have you ever played heard of this game? Real quick, have you ever heard of Rocket League? I, mean, I think mm -hmm. it's it's pretty popular, but no. Oh man, I've been I've been playing for for a month. It's. It's uh, it's really addicting. I lo I love that game. It's it's uh, I don't know the best way to. I'm, I'm sure there's people in the comments that know about Rocket League. Um, it's like soccer but with race cars. And okay. It's it's so much fun, man. It's it's really addicting. I've I've been getting pretty decent, but I've only been playing for for a month. But I've I've been playing like last night. I played all night. <laughs> well, it, it's tough with with two kids. Like I just can't play video games anymore. Um, yeah. I've I've been stuck on Tears of the, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom since last summer, um, and I, I'm still playing. I like I'm playing it like here and there, like an hour or two. Um, but yeah, I, I've been playing that game for almost a full year now, um, and it's just like I I, I mean I, I love the game, so like I'm not gonna try something new. Um, but it's it's just hard for me to uh, just to get to something new because like I, I just don't have much time. Although uh, my my son always wants to play Luigi's Mansion. Uh, so we, we've right, been right. we've been playing that and like he's been watching me play, you know, he's he's not ready to play yet, but he's uh, he, he loves watching me like beat up the ghosts in that game. So he gets really into it. So at least like we get to we get to do that. Uh, I, I already beat the game, though. I beat it last year, but uh, it's, it's fun to mm -hmm. do it again. It's a really good game. We just mentioned three. Um, Mike says, uh, wait, hold on. I didn't. Yeah, Chris says uh, it's the worst part. Yeah, OK, I read that one. Uh, Mike says that basketball story would be a great idea for your next oh, book. Well. Um, yeah. so I actually have a basketball story in this, in this new book. Uh, and, uh, Mike asking, did you make the final choice of the book cover? Uh, I actually have some news to break here. Um, the book is out as of th like three or four hours ago. Nice. Um, I don't know why, uh, it's two paperback version. There we go. Um, so yeah, jerks yeah. of the college years, uh, by Walter Sherpinski. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just got published like three hours ago or so, four hours ago. Congrats, man. Congrats. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I didn't order Get them my yet. Copy tonight. Oh, cool. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I was going to order some copies as soon as it was ready and it's, it's ready now. So yeah. Jerks of the college years. It's, uh, all my, all my stories of, uh, of college written in jerks of the week, uh, format. Um, as you know, Tom, I used to write in, in away messages on aim. But I, uh, oh, yeah. I made them. I made them into long formats, and so, uh, I mean, Tom. Tom can attest to some of the weirdos we live with. Um, it's in in the lower right. That's Joseph Scarfman, uh, a guy on our floor. Um, and who else would you? Uh, Acne Thong Girls, the the girl in the lower middle. Uh, she lived on the fourth floor of our building. Uh, but you said you didn't know her. Um, I don't remember her. Okay. Um, the guy in the top middle, the football player, it was a former quarterback of the team, and people pro may know who that is. So, um, let's see. the The guy in the lower left is that's the first story in the book. So, guy who's too like in the middle of the night, he went into my dorm room and stole my trash can. Um, I don't know why, but he did. Uh, the girl in the top left was uh, I called her Phantom of the Opera. Um, she, uh, she I, I think I talked to her. She, she's I talked about her before. She's, she's like the worst Sudoku player ever. Like she, she like would always have these Sudoku puzzles and would never fill them in. Um, and I talked to her, I, I actually have a safe conversation I had with her on aim. And like, she's like the dumbest person of all time. If you read the conversation in the book, it's like, you'll be like, Oh my God, this person is, is, is just like, intrigued not by a, her away messages. what'd you say? She's probably just intrigued by your away messages, you know? 
I don't think she ever. I don't think she ever saw them, uh, or maybe she did. But like, she, um, we talked because she was in one of my classes, um, and I, I mean, she was a pretty girl, so I was, you know, I was interested. But like, I like when I talked to her for the first time online, it was like you'll you'll see if you read the book. Like she is, she she was like brain dead. Like, like, uh, like some of the stuff she was saying was, was so ridiculous. Um, and then the, 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 the what you say? I just I just bought my copy just now. Oh, so, thanks, sorry. awesome. You're I think yeah, you're the first I can't one. wait to read it again. I think you're the first one. That's awesome. Um, and the uh, the guy in the top right was um, I called him Professor Count Dracula. Um, he he would always wear like sunglasses inside. Like he would be he would like stumble around drunk. Um, and uh, he ran the he ran our class like a game show. <laughs> He'd be like like <laughs> two points to you, five. And, like if someone would answer a question correctly, but like, five points to you. Like he would, like slur his words. <laughs> and so uh, yeah, there's that long chapter on him. So he's uh, I had him for two semesters. <laughs> so what did he teach him? He taught uh, game theory and math. Um, it was like one of the higher math courses. Uh, I took it when I was in computer science. Um, and, uh, my roommate, Dennis, who was actually the, uh, developer of the website, he was in the class with me, so he can attest to how weird this guy was. Um, I mean, I guess you have to be at least sort of strange to teach. What is it? Game theory. Man. Game theory. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that is, um, that's my book. Yeah, it's, it's, can't it's wait, right can't wait to read it. Got, like I said, got my copy. So great stuff, awesome. man. That, thank Especially you. Especially since I'll, I'll, I'll know some of these folks. So yeah, he will. You will. We have a whole chapter on uh, on our year in the book. So oh, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Awesome. Yeah. Tell me how you like it. Um, John says, uh, "So you're basically a white Dennis Rodman." Well, a Dennis Dennis Rodman, like I, I, who could shoot threes, but like I mean, I wasn't like the elite rebounder. I just like to box people out, just like to knock knock people around. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what I like to do. Um, who's that player for the the uh, Pistons? He's the junkyard dog. Um, in the uh, when they would win the uh, in the two thousands when uh, they won the uh, championships. Ben Wallace. Uh, ben Wallace. Yes, that's like that's, that's who I like model my game after. At least like oh, rebounding nice. was. Okay. And like, but like I would try I would shoot threes too. But that's the only thing I did offensively. Uh, worst game ever. Screw you. Screw you oh, no. Are you a Pistons yeah. fan there? Chris? Sorry. Sorry to dig up old bones there. Yeah. Uh, about the jewelry tattoos and wedding dress. Yeah. The Rodman. <laughs> I think we got a, I think we got a, we got a super here. Well, oh, we did. Slew. Uh, okay. Oh, nice. Uh, Slew 555. Thank, Thank you man. so much, Slew. Uh, will I be able to get a, a Walter Pobo signed, uh, to Slew, uh, jerks of the college's book at a premium, of course. Um, <laughs> if, uh, if you want, um, I can, I just, I mean, you can, um, email me your address and, uh, I will, I will sign one for you. Um, so yeah, if you, yeah, if you want to do that, just, uh, send in my email, just, uh, an email to me, send me your address and I'll do that. Um, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Cassandra's saying I'll get my copy tonight too. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thanks guys for, for ordering. This is awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I was surprised. I, they said it would be ready within 72 hours. So I thought like maybe by Monday, but, um, and then I got an email at like eight o'clock tonight and they're like, Oh, your book is ready. I'm like, wow, that was fast. Um, wow. Just, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised, especially it being like a holiday weekend too. So yeah, yeah, but, no, I, I was, that was, that was, uh, really surprising. Yeah. Hey, what was the what's the highest math you've ever taken? Like in high school or co college? Like what what all did you did you have to take? What, what, oh, I took, so I took game theory. That sounds that sounds like high math. Uh, I took higher than that. Um, I, calculus three was a nightmare of a class. It was uh, we had twelve people in the class. I think I, I was like it was a very small room. Our professor was uh, this Russian guy. Um, it was one of these like turtlenecks. Um, and it was like hot in the room. So I was like, I was like, man, how's he like managing? Like, uh, so, but anyway, he had this thick accent. He had like this wavy hair. Uh, otherwise he was, he was kind of a young guy. He was like 25 or 30. Um, but yeah, he, he taught us calculus three and, uh, we had a two question test once Two just, it's just two questions, but you know, each, it would take forever. It was like, like, uh, mm -hmm. You know how, how insane those classes get. So right, right. It's two question test, and he gave us the, the next class. He gave us our results. He's like, uh, in a Russian accent. I'm not gonna do the Russian accent. But he's like, he's like, he's like, all of you have failed. All none of you got any of these questions right. 
<laughs> we're like oh, okay wow. um like what well, is there gonna be a curve uh so he's he's like i'll solve them for you on the board <laughs> so he, t- he starts the first one he goes through it's like 10 minutes later he's still doing it he's still doing it and he arrives at an answer and he's like huh this is wrong <laughs> we're, like, we're like what you don't even know how to do this you give us a test on it <laughs> dude what a yeah and, and not only that but he lectures you about how you know yep he's condescending so, about it yeah boot. so he he didn't count the test uh so no one no one got a zero <laughs> so yeah it was uh he like that that was it like he just he couldn't solve the problem what <laughs> god I heard that Calc three was easier than Calc two. I never took either. I took Calc. Oh 1. no, no, no. Calc, Calc, Calc two was tough. I, I got like a B plus in there or something. Um, no, Calc three was a nightmare. It was an absolute nightmare. Um, really? Some, a couple people told me that three was easier than two. I barely understood one, but I had to go, go ahead with, with Calc three though. I'm interested to hear. Oh, uh, I mean, no. I, like our professor couldn't answer the questions. Like that. That's how advanced it oh. was. That's horrible. <laughs> Yeah, That's so, a yeah, 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 it was it was terrible. I was so glad to change my major to journalism. <laughs> Quite the difference. <laughs> we actually had I, I wrote about this in the book. Like we actually had girls in the class for the first time when I took journalism. It was like it was all dudes, and like you'd have like this random girl who had a, a mustache, and like that was it. It was like all like ninety nine percent guys, and like the one girl has a mustache, and it's just like so depressing because you go to this party school and you don't get to interact with any girls. Um, especially because, uh, especially with like my freshman year, it was an all male dorm too. And so like, I just never had any interactions with girls, uh, my first couple years. And so it was like, it was like pretty depressing. Um, and then like, I changed my major to journalism and, uh, the first day in the first class, like I see this girl, I was like, man, she's, she's so beautiful. And like, like, she's like, and then she looks at me and I'm like, wait, is there something here? So like after classes, I'd start talking to her and she's like, oh, we should uh, do some homework together. I'm like, yeah, okay. And nice. This is like so <laughs> different. This is like so different than my other classes. <laughs> Shaking your first, first steps into a brave new world. I know. I know. It was, uh, it was, it's so different. It's, it's so, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that, that is, like, I, I, like I, it, my, I, my whole college experience like changed completely. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I took, I took regular calculus or like, okay, so I never took pre-calc, but when I originally went to school, I went for music and then I, I changed for, to business. And when I like, so nothing from music to business transfers, right? Hardly anything transferred, which was fine. I kind of had a feeling that was going to happen anyhow going into it. But so, some random math did where I didn't have to take pre-calc, but they, like, I had to take calc. So I'm basically like as unprepared as like anyone could be to take calculus at a college level. I was nervous. So there was, there were five exams and the lowest, the professor would drop the lowest exam. I got like a like a forty percent on the first one, so I was like, okay, there's my drop, <laughs> right? You, you know. And then um, the next one I failed, but barely by like two points. So then I was like, okay, like I really need to get my myself together. Like I, I need to take this class so that I can like gra- you know finish. I was to finish my associates and then I could transfer to UCF. Like I, I have to pass this class, dude. I pulled like at least one all nighter a week, and it's usually two, because there's there's nothing scary. I end up getting I end up getting a B in the class. I got a ninety eight on the next exam, so like I put work in, and and I was I was ended up being decent at calculus. But there is nothing more frightening, Walter. Then remember how the textbooks they had the odd number answers in the back of the book. I don't remember like for, that. for math, like a lot of math books, like you would have the solutions to the homework problems in the back, to, but the, okay. only the odd numbers. So like I could check some of the homework problems, but there's nothing more like terrifying. It's like, I have no idea how I got to this answer and it's correct. (laughs) I did that all the time. It was scary. Cause I'm like, I don't know what this is. I think this is all I have to do. And it's right. That's a scary feeling, man. It's a scary feeling. So like, and you know me, like I can get in my head with the best of them, but I ended up, I ended up getting a B in the class. I would go see the, in fact, I think I had a 79.5% which should round up to 80. Anyhow, a C would have been fine too. I would have been past it still, but I used to see the professor like twice a week too. And I went to the two, I, I worked so hard and I, I knew if I did that and I was close, she would push me up to a B and she did. Nice. So, which I think 79.5 should anyways, but yeah, I, I had to work hard for calculus. I was like, I'm decent at math, but like I can do numbers like real, real quick in my head. Like I have an arithmetic certification, I guess. Is what you yeah, 
Yeah, I was always good at math too. Um, but like, I, I'm quoting my my roommate Dennis here. Um, he's like, he's like, yeah, math is great until they introduce letters, <laughs> and then, then it becomes <laughs> a nightmare. Um, no, I no, I I, I I was really good at algebra, geometry, algebra two, uh, trig, and then calculus started, and then it's like, well, that's when it started going downhill for me. Um, but I still did well in Calc one and like somewhat well in Calc two, but then Calc three happened and like I, I like I'm so tired of this. I don't I don't want to do math anymore. <laughs> I'm just like done. I like writing about football. Let me write about football. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say Calc three was the hardest college class you ever took? Uh, no, uh, it was um, this computer engineering class that we took. Uh, like it was it was like this this class maybe changed my major. I was um, it was Thon weekend, which is like for those of you who don't know at Penn State, it was like they have this thing called Thon. It's like a 40, it's a 48 hours, 48 hour dance marathon or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's like it's like, you know, I don't I would, don't participate in that. But like, you know, everyone goes to it and like it's a big drinking weekend. It's, it's a lot of fun. And so it was Thon weekend. And uh, instead of going out partying, we had this big assignment due. And so. Uh, my two uh, lab partners, uh, they were like, oh, let's meet at the uh, computer lab at, at eight o'clock. And I'm thinking, OK, we'll we'll work for a few hours, eight to 12 or something. And then and I could like go out, like go out late or whatever, you know. And so it's eight. It's like it's it's midnight. And we're like, we get we, we've gotten nothing done because like no one understands what we're supposed to do. And um, we're like, they're like, oh, we should order food. Uh, like, let's get, I'll go get some food. I'm like, oh, man, we're going to be here for a while. And so eventually it's like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m. We're still there. We got nothing done at all. Um, and uh, we're like, we're all trying to figure out like what to do. And none of us can figure it out. Um, and uh, like the sun's starting to rise. And I'm like, like, hey, guys, the sun's out. And they're like, like, yeah, yeah we should probably go back uh, to get some sleep. I'm like, yeah, please. I just want to get out of here. And um, so it's 7 a.m. at this point. They're like, okay, it's 7 o'clock. Let's meet back here at 11. I'm like, I, and I, I like, I just left. I'm like, I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back at all. So I actually dropped the class. Um, and I, I that was the day I decided that I had to shoot for major. Because, like, I was like, I'm, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I want to, like, I, not that I thought I was going to writing, but I was like, this, like, writing about football is like something I enjoyed. And I'm like, what if I get a, go yeah. into journalism? And like, that's, that's why I decided to write full time. Wow. That's, yeah. that's, that's really, that's a really interesting story, man. That's a good share. Thanks. That was uh, like, you can tell, like, you can tell it's a flashbulb too. Like, it was like the turning point for you. It was. I, I, that, I like, I, there was no way I could go back. I just couldn't go back to that lab. And I don't, I don't know if they ever finished their assignment because I dropped the class that that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's really interesting. I, I actually have a, a a pretty like on a different level though, like a, a rather similar story. So I, I originally went to school at Penn State for music, and then I was like, well, maybe I should just try music at a different school. So I went to Westchester University. <laughs> my my story of secondary edu- or not secondary, or, you know. My trying to get my bachelor's is, is a long and, and, and storied <laughs> road. So I went to I went to um, Westchester for a little bit. And I was like, well, I'll try to do music. But I knew deep down it wasn't what I wanted to do. But I was a really good player. And, you know, I was in a lot of the ensembles and stuff. And I remember one weekend I, I just had to keep the story short. I had so many rehearsals and concerts with all the different from like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it was basically nonstop the whole weekend. And, and I, I was hating every minute of it. And I knew deep down, I didn't want to do it. And I remember that Friday night, I just sat up in bed and I thought, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to screw them over for this weekend. Like I will perform in, in these, you know, I, you know, I, I owe them that much at least to, to perform in these concerts this weekend. But on Monday, I'm going to go in and I'm going to tell everybody in that building that I quit. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what I did. Oh, well. And, and it was, it was, it was good for me. Like I, I didn't, you know, I, I really enjoyed music on some level, but I, I was, I was doing it for the wrong reasons. I did it because I was good and I got attention. So like my heart wasn't, I, like I said, I did enjoy it on some level, but my heart wasn't in it. And it just felt so good to, to leave, you know, and I ended up getting a, a degree in business many years later, but, but it all worked out. It kind of reminded me of, uh, mm-hmm. of, of your story. It's, it's, it's funny how, how, stuff like that is, is so memorable <laughs> yeah if, if you're not happy I, you, you i think you have to uh you know for the sake of your mental health you just have to do stuff that you know will make you at least somewhat happy um for sure you know, yeah for sure 
Um, oh, yeah. all right, let's, let's get let's get to some of these comments. Um, uh, Mike says if they can televise curlings, let's support they can televise the claw game. Yep. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, you're right. right. I mean, the people watch televise. curling, right? Yeah, they televise poker. They televise darts right. somewhere. You know, yep. why not? Yeah, they, yeah, there's something for it, uh, and then everyone can see everyone lose. Yeah, there's, um, and there's so many networks now. They all need programming. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Some, someone will watch. John says you don't have to put clothes to catch a packets in the fridge. Yeah, I know that. Uh, yeah, I know that. But like for some reason, my wife like insists on it being in in the fridge. Uh, I don't know why, uh, but she's she's like, I'll put it in the fridge. Uh, she like, for, and like even like ketchup like itself, I don't think it needs to be in the fridge. Um, but like she always wants it in the fridge. I don't know why. Um, I guess just a thing. But uh, Cassandra yeah, John, says. Walt- Walt prefers his ketchup chilled too. So. <laughs> no, no, no. I prefer it warm. Actually, uh, I don't. I don't like it chilled oh, very okay. much. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm a ketchup snob. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Cassandra says it's impossible for a Wall Street not to devolve into good condiments. I know. Right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> we haven't even talked about football yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the off season for you. Yes. Like, Walt would play the claw game yeah. if A one was in there. I oh, would, he, he, yes, he, he, and here's why: because A one is never free. You can't get A one for free. Well, unless you're in a restaurant and you get it for a side, but you have to pay for the meal. But like what I'm saying is, like if you go to McDonald's or Wendy's or Chick fil A, you can go to the condiment section if you really want to. For some reason, you can pick up a bunch of ketchup packets, and leave the leave the building, and not pay a dime. Um, but you can you can't do that with A one. Never. So yes, that is why I would do it with A one. <laughs> Walt would be camped out in the tent the night before outside waiting for her to open the doors. That's right. Is that game ready. <laughs> That's right. Uh, John says mustard is the Hitler of condiments. <laughs> yes, I I hate mustard with a passion. So I completely agree with this one. I just what, I all, all mustard or just some? There's a lot of mustards oh. out there. Oh, disgusting! They're all disgusting. No mustard. Oh, I, I'm into the mustard scene. It's it's Ugh. not bad. It's hard. I'm not a there's like 30 kinds, you know that? Yeah, they're all, they're all bad. There's no, there's something. I mean, how many, how many condiments do we need? How many types of stone ground mustard? I saw a stone ground mustard at the store one time. What the hell does that mean? Some poor sap sitting on a stump slamming rocks together so you can have your damn sandwich. Stone ground. I mean, how much different can it really be? There's too many. <laughs> I'm just I'm just upset at the amount of, of mustards there are, but mustard itself, like I, if, if like on a hot dog, I don't know when I'm having a hot dog, other than that, than at a ball game, I guess. Uh, yeah, like, well, hot dog, it's either it's ketchup, cheese, or chili, uh, you know, chili cheese dog. Um, yeah, but no mustard. I can't. I can't if, do it. If, if I had to choose between ketchup or mustard on the hot dog, I'd definitely choose mustard. I don't know who you are anymore. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, recall that book. Add a, ch- add, add a chapter yes. for me and my and my my mustard. Yeah, I'll have, my to, uh, mustard uh, there. Yeah, I'll have to take it down and I <laughs> put in a new jerk. <laughs> yeah, we, we kindly request that you ship back your copies of Jerks to College Years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Baggy says, if you can't finish it all, a bunch of individual fries is much easier to save than part of a burger. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, it's something you could just snack on. Um, uh, but like, I, I don't know, like, that's it's never like appetizing, you know. I, I'd rather weird. have it as a con, as like a compliment to, to the burger or the hot dog. I, uh, I just, I disagree. I think it's easier to like, if you're, are you talking like if you go home with like a, like a, a box, like a doggy bag sort of thing? I, I feel like reheated fries of any kind or like, Leftover fries are always bad. I mean, I never then, look forward then to part leftover. of a burger. It's, I don't know. It seems weird to like save like a, a quarter of a burger. I don't know. I, I think I've probably done that before. Like, well, actually, that's not true. I, I mean, let's be real. I'm a hog. I'll finish every plate I eat. <laughs> Me I too. Have. I'm like a fish. I'll like, I'll yeah, eat like everything. <laughs> if, if it's leftovers at home, it's, you know, maybe the girl I was, you know, she, <laughs> she only ate half her meal or whoever. But yeah, like I've seen people save like part of their sandwich. Or a burger, like as opposed to like maybe the fries too, but I'd rather have the the burger. I think that's easier. Oh, like microwave fries, or I don't know. Like I just feel like they can't be done right. Have you ever had good microwave fries? No, I haven't. You're right. Isn't, um, isn't that weird? It's like like how hard could it be to make ones that are good? I remember like as a kid when I first discovered what they were. I mean, I must have been like six or seven or whatever. I was like microwave fries. Like I love you know, you know. You're a kid. You love French fries. Mm-hmm. I just remember being so disappointed. Microwave fries are the worst. Yeah, they're they're not good. Uh, it's weird. We, I don't know we why. We can send a man to the moon, yet <laughs> we can't. 
It's a matter of great concern, obviously. We can move on. Bagger says once got a 300 in Wii Sports. Congrats, <laughs> yeah, I, I used to play Wii Sports all the time. It was fun. Um, Chris says those virtual boys are highly valuable now. Are they really? Uh, I, I imagine so. I mean, like the original Earthbound game uh, was, uh, I know that's a lot too, like unwrapped. Uh, virtual boy, I'm just like looking on Amazon. Um, $433. They're, they're How much? $433. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they're they're they're, they're they've got to be pretty obscure. They've got to be pretty obscure. Yeah, uh, Chris asking, did you submit an entry to the Mega Man Robot Design Contest? I think for MM Six. I yeah, I did. I did submit something. I can't remember what it was, but I did submit something, and it must have been bad because I, I was kind of blocking it out. So it must have been embarrassing. Um, but uh, no, I, I used to have ideas for Mega Man all the time. I used to actually in class. I used to design levels uh, for for Mega Man and like Super Mario Brothers. Um, and that's that's what I would do like during class when like the teacher was teaching something and like if they ever looked at my notes they'd be just like designs with like 2D levels. <laughs> so no wait, when you when you say designs, do you mean like hand drawn or do you mean like like oh, on yeah, the computer drawn. you're writing code and what's that? Hand drawn, hand drawn. I mean this this oh, okay. is back in like 1992 that I would do this. Oh, yeah. oh okay. I didn't know if it was maybe like a computer science class or something and you were on a computer. No, no, no. <clears throat> no, I was I was wow. I was designed a What'd you say? I think that's cool, actually. Yeah, I, w I mean, I was 10, so I don't know how like, great they could have been, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I was yeah, like, I thought they were thinking yeah. about, of, like, you were creative on that yeah, level. I no, I, I, when, I, when I was a kid, like, the, the earliest, um, like, profession I wanted to, to do was, uh, was to be a video game designer. Um, and I think that's why I went to computer science. I actually, I actually made a game. Um, in computer science so it like involved a man like drunkenly trying to cross the bridge um and uh how, how old was, were you i was 17 i think oh, 16 God. i thought you were, gonna, you were gonna say you were like i don't know like 12 or 13 oh, okay for some reason and you're like just a drunken man trying to yeah, yeah it was like like he would have to like you'd have to like make sure he wouldn't fall off the bridge it was it was a it was yeah, like a, yeah. it was a simple game but it was, it was yeah fun. yeah yeah um, oh, that's, that, that's that's cool though. You, you know, my my brother does a video game design, and he's my brother is like one of the smartest people I know. But you know what he's really good at? I've learned from him. He is like trial and error all day. Like I guess that's what what you need to do to get really good at, at something. But he will trial and error all day long and and like figure things out. He's he's good at like learning new things. I'm I'm not as as good at that. There's no way I could like these people that uh, design those Mario Kaizo levels. I wouldn't have the first clue even with internet access. I wouldn't know where to begin. Well, they have those. Mar they have Mario Maker games you could you could do. Um, I actually oh. designed. I think I designed like twelve levels in Mario Maker, the original one. I had. Um, I would do like one. You know, I'd do like one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, kind of like the original Mario. And so I'd have like my plan was to do eight worlds like that. Um, mm -hmm. And each 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 world has its own theme. So like like one of the levels is like spiny, like uh, like all spinies um and so like my the levels would be like spinal tap uh and then like it was all like a play on the spinal stuff and so like oh, cool. the enemies are all spinies and like you'd have to like and there were like the in in like weird formations and stuff like that um and so it was it was pretty cool i think i think the levels are kind of neat um, that's all like, is, it, is it easy to use i feel like something like that i wouldn't be i wouldn't be able to figure it it's, out it's not it's uh, and, and it's i think it's 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 pretty easy to use i think it's it's not too bad um, I, the hardest thing is like thinking of ideas and just trying to, trying to play it out. But like the fun part is just like making, like actually making the level and then like testing it and just to see how it yeah, goes. Yeah. And like, like sometimes you, you'll, you'll, uh, try to do a level and you're like, this is broken. I actually can't beat it. And like, cause you have to like change some stuff because like, you know, an enemy is like an obscure location and just like always falls in you or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, you have to, it, it's fun. It's just really fun to test it. So. That's, um, I think that's that's so awesome. I, I know a guy from like the Kaizo community that does, has designed some really, really good hacks. Uh, smoked, uh, smoked Fish and Cabbage and Smoked Fish and Cabbage 2 and now 3. Uh, they're, they're amazing hacks. And I've told him, you know, because I, I sort of know him. You know, he's, he's, uh, he's been on my streams. And I'm like, dude, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have the first clue of like how to start making something like that. I don't know. Like maybe I, I feel like I just don't have a, a mind for that. You know, yeah, like, just, I, I don't I, know. You I, just have to like envision it in your head, and like I don't know. 
I think about stuff like this too. Like, okay, the idea of the telephone. Could you invent the telephone? Like, uh, with I mean, it, even with internet access. Because, <clears throat> like, think you know, like Alexander Graham Bell. Like when they they had it, and you know, obviously, it didn't happen overnight. There were a series of ideas, like you know, leading up to the telephone. But like, they, they didn't have like internet access back then, or like any technology really. Obviously. So I'm saying, like, I wouldn't be able to figure it out even with internet. If you were like build a like a, like make a phone call work, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Yeah, I mean, how would you even get the plastic for it? I, I guess I'd, I guess I'd start with like the can on a string. Right. <laughs> no, no. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, could like make plastic? Like, go simpler. Like, how do you make yeah, plastic? Yeah. Like, it just uh, like stuff like yeah. that is just very difficult. Um. And, you know, I, I think that I think that's kind of like um, with the population reduction uh, fears that people have, it's like the fewer people you have, like the fewer uh, like, like the fewer people you have to like who are going to be like specialists in this, in this sort of things. And so, like, eventually, like you're going to have something that needs to be invented that's, that can't be invented or, or, or built. And, and like that's right. kind of the fear there. Um, anyway, um Let's get some more comments. Uh, Mike says that book cover is cool. Uh, thanks, Mike. I mean, everyone, yeah. everyone was was really uh, helpful in the process uh, of choosing the cover. Um, but yeah, I think the artist here did a great job. Um, sure yeah, Chris says Jerome Jerome Williams was a junkyard dog. Uh, ben well Ben Wallace is big Ben. Yes, uh, Jerome Williams oh, is okay. the guy I was thinking of. I, I always like Jerome Williams, the junkyard. Oh, dog. okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Bagger says, I literally have a math degree and Calc 3 is still the hardest class I've ever taken. Oh, yeah, wow. that, that, I think that, w that was second place to my computer engineering class. Um, because like, at least I passed Calc 3. I didn't, I can't say I passed that computer engineering class because I dropped it. That's, you know, <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, math, math for sports betting. Yep. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that definitely helped. Uh, Vaga says, I'm actually using math in my school's March Madness tournament, despite not knowing anything about college basketball. I'm currently fourth out of 48 entries. Uh, I would oh, like nice. to hear how how did you use math, uh, Bagley, uh, in, your, in your tournament? I'd like to hear uh, it, too. Yeah, that'd be awesome to hear. Um, Chris says, I'm surprised uh, a couple <laughs> of handsome guys like you uh, weren't able to get extra credit. Oh, yeah, that was, you know, probably some behind-the-scenes stuff, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> We won't talk about that. <laughs> Mike says, "Random girl with a mustache." Are you sure it was not Arthur? <laughs> I, I honestly, I don't know. It could have been. It could have been. Um, there, there were some. There were some hideous beasts in the, in that class. Uh, but yeah, one of them could have been Arthur Smith. Pr present um, company included. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I thought we were handsome guys. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was. I was out of line. Um, John says this is all fascinating, but you, would you rather trade or pay for Ayuk or Higgins? Oh, I'd take um, Higgins. what'd you say? I'd take Higgins out of those two. They're so uh, it's so close. Who's younger? I think they're uh, they're no, they're in the same draft, right? So uh, they're probably the same age. Um, really? Yeah, they're I in feel the same. Like draft. Higgins is far superior. Coming for you know. I don't know. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm just judging because I, I don't like the 49ers, so I have a bias against. I, I feel like Higgins has um, a longer track record of success because Io had a slow start to his career. Um, you know, he was in the doghouse the second season. Um, he he had to get out of it, but um, he's gotten so good recently. Um, and just just think about the different quarterbacks. Like Io's pl been playing with Jimmy Garoppolo and um, and you yeah. know uh, and Brock Purdy and like T Higgins has had. Joe Burrow for most of his career. Um, and so, like, you know, if you, if you switch him, if, like, Ayuk has been playing with Joe Burrow and, like, T. Higgins was on the Niners, I think Ayuk's numbers would look better, a lot better. Um, and maybe – may, I don't know if you'd still think I, Higgins over Ayuk. You, you might think differently. So, it, it is it is very close. Uh, you can't go wrong with either. I think both are phenomenal. Um, I, I think I, I think I was, I'd give a slight edge to Higgins, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, it's so close. It just – I don't know. I'll tell you what I, I think Purdy Purdy was a flash in the pan. I, I I don't I don't think I don't think he's gonna live up to these past uh, two seasons that that he's had moving forward. I mean, it's two years. It's a kind of a it's not a small sample size. Yeah, I know, but I I have a feeling that's gonna happen. I I, I feel like they're gonna catch on to it. I don't, I, I just I have a hard time seeing him continue to success seeing like uh -huh. the success that, that I've had. I don't know. I just got a quacky feel. It hit it hit me just now. I don't know. They really look vulnerable in that. They 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 should, they should have lost those first two playoff games. 
They should have, but then again, they could have also beaten the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. So you can, right, right. You can go both you're ways, wrong. you know? You're not wrong. But uh, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just James saying. L. asking, Jets winning the division. Um, I think they could. Uh, I My money would be on the Bills, um, but the Jets are going to be very close. And I, I say the Bills because I think the Jets have a big downside because uh, Tyron Smith, very injury prone. Mike Williams going off torn ACL. Aaron Rodgers, you know, coming – off that injury is uh, and as, as a forty year old now, like can he still play? We don't know. Um, there's a lot, it's a lot of question marks with the Jets. Um, I feel like the Bills are have a better proven track record, um, and the Bills are so close to being the Chiefs last year. Like, and if they beat the Chiefs, who knows? Maybe they win the whole thing. Um, so I, I would give the edge to the Bills, but that that division is going to be great again, except for the Patriots. Bills, Jets, Dolphins, Dolphins are still going to be good too. Um, so uh, yeah, so, but I mean. Like I said, they certainly could do it. Um, like Chris saying, uh, "How about a drunken squirrel? One of the best games ever." I'm You're not familiar. Conquer's bad fur day. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, I'm not sure. It, it was like kind of like a. It was in a slightly like risque game of uh, it, like like Crash Bandicoot game style play, but it was like adult mm-hmm. themes, if I recall correctly. Mm-hmm. Conquer's bad for a game. What what drunk what what drunk squirrel game are you referring to, Chris? Yeah, I don't like I don't know. Um, so asking, is there anyone on the leaderboard worth in hedging Scheffler? Um, okay, so let's run through this. Uh, let's look at data golf. Uh, it's it's very clogged here. It's it's hard to hedge right now. I I think mm-hmm. I'm gonna. If anything, I would like to try to hedge. Uh, some at some point on Sunday. Um, but right now, like like. I mean, these guys could win it. Like Stefan Yeager is a really good golfer. Uh, Thomas Dietrich, um, I, I have a built-in hedge with him right now because I have him in my Raymakers lineup. Um, I have him and Shuffler in my Raymakers lineup, and I'm, I'm in fourth. So if if Dietrich wins, then um, I, I'm going to do really well in the contest. So um, that's already built in for me personally. Uh, but he's a really good golfer as well. Whereas like Tosti and Skins are not good golfers. Um, and you can see here in the percentages, you have like Shuffler 32.7% to win, Jaeger 11%, Dietrich 9.3, and then you have Toss, Tossy and Skins at 5%. Like these these guys really don't belong. I feel like they're going to drop off. But then you, you can go lower and like Batia is a solid golfer. Taylor Moore won this tournament last year. Um, he's only one back. He could win. Nick Dunlap has won a tournament this year. Uh, Tony Finau is a really good golfer. Um, he's only two back. He could win. Aaron Rye is fine. Um, is there anyone? That's, there's no one at six. So I think. Uh, Everyone at seven under or better is, is live to win. Uh, but yeah, I, I, again, like I'm going to, um, I'm going to just wait and see on Sunday. I'll tweet it out if, um, if I think that there, there's something worth hedging, but like something this cluttered at the top is, is really hard to hedge. So I, I, I mean, I think Shuffler's going to win. Um, he's, he's the best golfer in the world. And, and it's not, honestly, it's not even close right now with anyone else on, on PGA tour. Like he doesn't have to deal with uh, John Rahm. Who's on live? He doesn't have to deal with Brooks Kapka, who's on live. He doesn't have to deal with Cam Smith. He doesn't have to deal with uh, Dustin, Dustin, um, Dustin Johnson or, or uh, DeChambeau. Um, like, think about like if, if Tiger were playing and there was no Phil Mickelson or no VJ Singh. Like, th- this is the same thing with Scheffler. Like, all of his top competition is gone. And like these guys, these guys are far inferior golfers compared to him. Um, and so I, I think I think he's going to win. Uh, so you probably won't need a hedge, but like I said. At some point Sunday, if I see something, I will tweet it out. Um, okay, so Bag is saying Nintendo shutting down the Mario Maker One servers in about a week. Oh, that's sad. Uh, so you have to buy the new one for the Switch. I actually have the new one for the Switch. I just haven't played it, uh, just because like I, I played Mario Maker One and had some levels, and then um, I got Mario Maker Two as a present for i don't know if it's my birthday or something a couple years ago um but i've never played it just because like i've I've, had other games like i I breath of the wild then i had um a dragon quest 11 which is one such a great game that was an amazing game um and then i uh i I played through luigi's mansion 3 and then uh and then uh tears of the kingdom and some other stuff Uh, kingdom hearts 3 so I've been playing through all those games. So just I just didn't have a chance to make new levels in Mario Maker just because like I feel like that's like a long process. Like I have to think of I have to think of levels and like I don't know when I'm thinking of stuff. I'd rather think about like handicapping games, you know, and like trying to to figure out winners rather than like building levels. Like I feel like my, like my creativity has to go toward right. like, 
toward my, my profession, you know? I understand that, yeah. Yeah, uh, Chris, uh, Conquer N64, oh, okay. of course. Uh, where else can you battle <laughs> opera singing Pile of Poo? <laughs> yeah, I've never you know, played that. I never, I only like have seen like videos of it and that sort of thing, uh, Chris. But yeah, that was that was an interesting game. There, have you ever played a game called Boogerman? I think it was on Super Nintendo and Genesis. It was just like he was like a caped like superhero, but he was just like really disgusting. Like he flicked like boogers at. It was gross. <laughs> but, no, I never played that. Yeah, Booger Man, it was called. We oh, what about this uh, following the team zero percent project? Insanely cool story. I don't, I don't know what this is. Um, I'm not sure either. Yeah, bag. We have to tell us about this. I, I've never heard of it. Um, all right, so uh, let's talk about football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first time. Um, where are we? So trade grades. Um, Jets got Hassan Reddick uh, from the Eagles uh, for a 2026. Second or third round pick. So this is a third round pick. Uh, it starts with a third round pick. It could turn into a second round pick if Reddick gets 10 or more sacks this year and he plays six, more than 67.5% of the snaps, which like I feel like I don't I feel like this is gonna be a third rounder because like he could still get 10 plus sacks and play like 65% of the snaps like they could time it out. So the Eagles won't get a second round pick um, if they're smart. Um I don't know. I mean, who knows? Uh, we'll see what happens. But like, yeah. I, I think this is a trade, a good trade for both teams because the Jets are all in now. Because like, your Aaron Rodgers has this year and maybe next year. Um, so I feel like the Jets needed to get someone who could get win them uh, Super Bowl this year, and Reddick can do that. Like Reddick is in his in the prime of his career. He's twenty nine. Um, he's he's had four straight seasons of eleven plus sacks. He's one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. Um, and, uh, it's not like the Jets really needed an edge rusher, but like they, they could have used an upgrade, um, to make their pass defense even better. And like, there's so many good quarterbacks in the AFC. You have Josh Allen, you have Tua just in the division alone. Of course you have Joe Burrow, you have CJ Stroud, Mahomes, of course, Justin Herbert, there's so many good quarterbacks in the conference that you need to have a great pass rush. And so the Jets getting erratic, I think could put them up uh, like to another level um, in their, in their quest to win the Super Bowl. So I like this move and, you know, it, they're mortgaging for the future, but that's, that's the plan. That's what they're doing. Um, and so it, it, it goes with their plan. Whereas like the Eagles, um, yeah, they're getting a little bit worse this year with going from Reddick to Bryce Huff. But Bryce Huff is younger, and by 2026, he's going to be better than than Reddick in a couple of years. So um, the Eagles, like, they could still win with Huff uh, because, uh, you know, he's, he's still a good edge rusher now, uh, and they have a ton of talent. But, like, in 2026, when, you know, Jalen Hurst is still young and, like, a lot of the core is still going to be young, like, they're going to have a great chance there, and they're going to pick up a third or second second round pick. So, um, I, I love the trade for both teams. Like sometimes, like a team will win lopsidedly in one in, in a trade, or um, I've had it where like both teams score poorly. Um, but this is this is a trade where both teams I thought won. Um, I, I gave them both a minuses. So a any thoughts on this, Tom? <clears throat> Not on that directly, but I've got a I've got a hot take for you here, Walt, about the Jets. Okay, what are they are they favored to win that division? Are they favored? Uh, I'll have to look on Fandle. Um, I'm gonna look right now. You know what? I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna throw something out here and feel free to be rebuke me. Are we really that sure? I mean, you know, Aaron. Ro I think everyone like it's almost a foregone conclusion that Aaron Rodgers is gonna come in there when he plays and he's gonna be awesome. I mean, he's getting older. He's you know he's coming off a, a, a you know he hasn't played in a year. You know, like. Uh, I feel like everyone is maybe expecting, oh, yeah, like he'll just be great again. Well, we don't really know that for sure. Like, plus, you know, I think the age factors into it, you know, when it happened, that uh, that injury. Like, do you think there's any chance that maybe he, he won't, you know, he, he could fall below expectations? I feel like people aren't thinking about that. I, yeah. I think that could def definitely happen. So, I, I don't know, not saying that the Jets will be bad as long as he's healthy. I mean, he's going to have to be healthy for, for them to be good, I, I, I think. I mean, it's... But I, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not it's not going to be as easy of a road for them. You know, we don't know what we're going to get from Rodgers yet. Yet, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think we, we're going to know um, until he actually plays. He, he could be bad like he's in his 40s. You know, um, I think there's also a chance that he's really good, too. Um, but no, they're not. They're not the favorites. The Bills are plus 130. Dolphins okay. are plus 210. Jets are plus 260. So they're actually uh, in third place right now. So a plus two sixty yeah. actually looks pretty good. I think 
like I said, I think they could win the division. I think the Bills will do it, but um, it's it's a real three horse race here that could go either way. The Patriots should be like a hundred to one. I, I know who's, who's betting. Yeah, I, I, how high would it have to be for you to bet a dollar? Yeah, infinity to one. <laughs> I don't like, think you, I take it. Elon home. Musk's yeah. uh, uh, like uh, uh, assets entire, entire to one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There's, there's just, there's just absolutely no way. Well, let's. Yeah. I mean, you want to go through here and, and see if we find anything while we're here at the divisions, or I don't know. Sure. Uh, well, let me let me get to some comments and I'll do it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Get to, get get to what you're going to get to as well. Sorry. Uh, Bag says out that later. Okay. Um, John says they should have resigned Huff. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that you could you could argue they could do that, um, but I, I don't mind the route that they went either. Um, Chris says didn't play much of Boogerman or Earthworm Jim outside of his cameo and, and Clay Fighter. I played Earthworm Jim once, I think. I, I didn't it's like fun. it too much. I like it. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, Mike says it's hard to believe Cardinals had Reddick playing off ball. Yeah, <laughs> Cardinals did not know what they were doing with him. Uh, and uh, Chris says, "What about the last zero percent level being a scam?" Uh, I would. I, I'm kind of curious about the, what this is now. Yeah, I am too. All right, uh, division winners. Uh, so we talked about the AFC East, uh, AFC South. Texans are plus one fifty. Jaguars plus two fifty. Colts plus two eighty. Titans plus six hundred. Uh, Titans needs to be higher as well. Um, I think this is. I think Jaguars are kind of interesting because they were eight and three last year. Uh, they fell apart, but that was Trevor Lawrence being hurt. Um, uh-huh. I like what they've done this offseason. They added our Eric Armstead, uh, you know, a couple other good players. Um, I think that they could easily win the division. Now, I, now I think I'd make Houston the favorite, but um, Jaguars plus 250 is uh, – if you saw that a year ago, you'd be like, wow, this is yeah. a good deal. You know, I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, worth worth considering. I definitely think so, too. Um and I mean, I, I think Houston is the, you know, obviously the favorite is, is the sexy pick. I mean, who's not going to get excited about as as am I, you know, a Stroud in that Texans team. I think the future looks bright for them. But the Jaguars are, are really good, too. I expected, you know, I know we both did. I, t- I bet them to win the Super Bowl before last season started. So I was I was very disappointed when they didn't even make the playoffs, of course. Um, but, yeah, you know, if once Lawrence got hurt last year, you could <laughs> The things that don't show up in the box score, you could just see he was timid and he was not the same out there, at least for in, in my opinion. So I, I really like the plus two fifty as as well. But you know, I mean, Houston could could win it too, obviously. But yeah. uh, I think that's pretty good value. Yeah, I mean, Colts are going to be in the mix too. They're good. Um, but yeah, but yeah, Jaguars plus two fifty looks good. It's something I'd consider betting. Um, uh, AFC North, you have Ravens plus one ten, Bengals plus one seventy five, Browns plus five fifty. Steelers plus 950. Uh, it's a little weird to see the Browns up that high because uh, they were so good last year. Um, I, I think the Ra- I would not bet the Ravens. They lost three offensive linemen this offseason. Now, yeah, they, they could they could replace those guys well. They're Baltimore. Baltimore is a smart organization. But, you know, when they lost Marshall Yonda um, in 2019, uh, that offense line wasn't good. And we saw the Ravens struggle after that uh, Lamar Jackson first MVP season. Um so here, if anything, I think I would go with the Bengals. Um, it's not a great number though, so I don't know if I'm going to bet it. But I, you know, I my pick is for the Bengals to win the division. So um, plus one seventy five, one seventy five is not terrible. Uh, maybe you can find something better during the season. Like the Bengals usually start poorly, right? So if they if they start zero and two, you can you're probably going to be, be able to find like plus three fifty or something. So I think I'd wait on this one. Do you think you could make I, – I don't like the Ravens here. I'm trying to think of what – I'm leaning towards the Bengals as well. Maybe the Browns, though. But, but do you think you could make any argument to, for the Steelers here at plus nine fit? I mean, imagine, I don't know, like Fields or or Will, or Wilson, like ends up doing like halfway decent over there. And, you know, like TJ, TJ Watt and the defense are, are, are clicking. Like could they be up there and maybe you get an early cash out? I mean, I'm, I'm grabbing it. I'm, you know, I'm reaching a little bit here, but I'm just trying to see what you think. Uh, and these teams are all good. Like, I, I don't yeah. think I'd do it in, in a softer division. Sure. But yeah. it's, it seems division. like a lot of things would have to happen, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, AFC West, you have chiefs minus two fifty. <laughs> yeah. Chargers plus three seventy Raiders plus a thousand Broncos plus 1700. This, this, this number needs to be much higher for, for me to consider this. Um, the Raiders are interesting because they have such a great defense. They beat the chiefs on Christmas. 
However, they didn't really do anything quarterback, and their offensive line is still the same, so they're a tough sell. Uh, Chargers have gotten worse. No Keenan Allen, no Mike Williams. Um, so I think the Chiefs are going to do it. But, you know, if Mahomes goes down, obviously someone else is going to do it. So um, I don't think the Raider, Raiders, the 10-1, to 1, doesn't look too bad. Um, no, I mean, you're going to – again, you're going to need Mahomes to miss several games. But uh, if that if that happens, the Raiders are, are going to be right there. I think the Raiders are better than the Chargers, by the way. Yeah, and and I don't I don't disagree. I wouldn't take any of these four, but if I did, I would I would take the. the I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to take the Chiefs. That's I just don't like the the number there. But I would take the Raiders. I mean, keep in mind what was it with like two or three games to go, um, last year in the regular season. The Broncos had the Broncos worn out. Yeah, the, like the, the Broncos from last year and the Chiefs lost out because the Chiefs were not doing well down the stretch, remember? Yep. The Broncos actually could have overtaken them for the division. So I don't know that necessarily the Chiefs will run away with it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, they, they yeah, didn't and last that, year. They yeah, the, like, remember, yeah, remember, it, remember the Broncos had a chance and then they played the Patriots on Sunday night football oh. and they lost to the Patriots. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> It was just so funny because I remember thinking, I can't believe this Broncos team could actually make the playoffs after like the 70 to 20, like all the gaps of, of that season for the second year in a row. But mm-hmm. yeah, so I, I'm just saying that I guess my point is, you know, we, I, I thought it last year and now like we'll do it again since they won the Super Bowl uh, two years again. Like they think, oh, the Super Bowl uh, winner, they're going to just run away with it. And sometimes they do. But the Chiefs didn't run away with it last year. You know, by, by the end, it kind of looked like they did, but. You know, so I'm just saying that, you know, take that for what it's worth if you're looking to pick an AFC West winner this year. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, NFC East, you have Cowboys plus 120, Eagles plus 135, Giants 9 to 1, Redskins 9 to 1. Um, I think the Eagles are commandos, good. baby. <laughs> just kidding. Not, not the commandos. <laughs> I, I, I think the I think Redskins are kind of interesting, but I, I think the Eagles are, are going to be a lot better this year. I think they should be the favorite. Now plus one thirty five is not great value, um, but I I would bet them if I had to bet any of these teams because I I think I, like I'm gonna I'm gonna um, post my power rankings uh, soon um, and I think the Eagles are like third or fourth, uh, whereas like the Cowboys Cowboys are and Redskins are like in the in the, around the middle and the Giants are one of the worst teams. So you think the Eagles are going to be a lot better this year? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they added Devin White to their linebacking course. Big upgrade. They've got uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson back. Um, it's gonna be a huge help for them in the secondary. Uh, hiring Vic Fangio to coordinate the defense, like it's gonna be night and day. How you know how bad the defense was last year? Like the defense is gonna be a lot better this year. It's not gonna be. It's not. Gonna, I don't think it's gonna be amazing, but like it's, I think it's gonna be really good. Um, and then you have the offense. Uh, you have Saquon Barkley on offense. If we're just gonna like. It's it's a dimension that the Eagles haven't had, and yet they've been explosive offensively, and now they're going to have Saquon Barkley. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, this team, the Eagles are going to be really good. I'm, I I want to bet them to win the Super Bowl. I think I saw 17-1 to out there, and I think I'm going to take it. Wow, that's – okay. Well, you, you you sold me then. I mean, I, I wouldn't take – I mean, I wouldn't take any of these four because yeah. I think, like, you know, I feel like Dallas and the Eagles is, is – I mean, I mean, up until you told me that just now, like I feel like it's a coin flip of sorts. Like it could be either one of those, and I don't see it being anybody else. You know? Yeah, um, I mean, Dow- Dallas lost their left tackle. They lost one of the linebackers. Uh, Mike McCarthy still the coach. Um, you know, I, I, they're going to be good. They're going to be like ten and seven, eleven and six. But you know, the, the Eagles are a lot better right now. I think. Um, NFC South: the Falcons minus one ten, uh, Buccaneers plus three hundred, Saints plus three forty, pa- Panthers ten to one. Um, I, I, you know, I, I think the Falcons win the division, but like, what if Kirk Cousins struggles off the torn Achilles, you know, then it could be someone else. Um, but I don't know, like none of these teams excite me. I think like if you take a non-Falcons team, I think, I think the saints are the best bet just cause like the Buccaneers have lost some talent. Um, whereas like the saints have been like, the saints really haven't lost anyone, but they haven't gained anyone either. Um, they get, they signed Chase Young, but. You know, he's kind of been a disappointment. Um, but that, that's all they've done. It seems like the Saints have been neutral, whereas the Buccaneers, they lost the starting corner. They lost the starting starting linebacker. Um, and I think that, like, Baker Mayfield got so lucky last year 
Uh, Tampa as a whole got so lucky in so many games last year. Like they locked into so many wins. So I think, I think they're going to see some regressions to the mean with them. So I, I would definitely not bet them. Um, so yeah, Saints look more appealing to me, but I, this is like stay away. I don't. I think the Falcons are just going to take it. I mean, okay. I'm going to make an argument for the Panthers here. Okay. 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 <laughs> because I feel like the Saints, they're they're uh, like they're in, going to be in uh, purgatory for a while. Like they're going to be like the Atlanta Hawks of the NFL for like where they're never like good enough to really win. Well, they did win a Super Bowl not terribly long ago, but you know, like they're like, they're just going to be mediocre. I, right. I think this year. Okay. So like what would have to happen? Cause you know, Carolina did get some decent pieces. I know you made that when you tweeted it out and you're like, what's scary about that? Or I can't wait, remember what you said, but like, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pan so, so Fandle, like they listed like the players starting for the Panthers and they're like, <laughs> they like this, this is a scary offense. And I, I retweeted and I was like, Oh wow. So scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like scary to who or something like that. I can't remember what you said, but I remember laughing. But you okay, so like let's let's say I don't know, something happens and Bryce Young like turns it around. Mm -hmm. Like he goes from like remember Jared Goff had a terrible year. Yeah. First year, you know, like I mean that, that that's a tall order, you know. It's a tall order. But do you think that they could maybe I, I think we talked about this with, with them maybe making the playoffs. So like that might be a better play than you know, whatever that might be, then, then, you know, cause I think for that to happen, probably the Falcons would have to have an injury too, or, you know, you know a pretty serious injury or Kirk cousins goes full Russell Wilson on him, mm. you, you know, which I mean, we didn't think that was going to happen to Russell. Wilson. So, so nothing's a guarantee. And that's why like, the, like to, to me, the Falcons doesn't look, I mean, I think they're head and shoulders above the other three teams, but I don't know. It's just, it's just not a guarantee. And, right. and it's Kirk. The thing is, Kirk Cousins too. People love to make fun of him. People love to say, "Oh, he sucks." Prime time, and like all of a sudden, it's like it's like the narrative, like, "Oh, now we have Kirk Cousins," which I think he's he's a pretty good quarterback, you know. But you know, people people like to throw shade at him, and now all of a sudden, it's like, "Oh, like they're going to run away now." They have, it's like, wait, what? I don't know. It just seems like the like the public kind of shifted on it. So I I think because of that too, I wouldn't take the Falcons here. But Panthers to make the playoffs, I might be interested. Like, they, I, I mean. If something like what I just described happened and, and Bryce Young does better, you know, maybe has a bounce back like, you know, Jared Goff did and has a, a year like that, maybe they could sneak into second place. But probably I think the argument against that is this division. Like you probably need to win the division to make the playoffs. But yeah. I don't know. I'm just over here playing devil's advocate and talking to myself. No, I, I think I think you can you could definitely make an argument for the Panthers because this division's bad. And if Cousins is is not quite himself off the injury, then any team can win. Um, and the Panthers, I, I I like the coach that they hired. Dave Canales has done some great work with Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield recently. Um, so he theoretically could get the most out of uh, Bryce Young and like they've done a good <coughs> job of improving their offensive line. They got Deontay Johnson. Um, they, they added some uh, defensive pieces. Oh, they lost Brian Burns, but they, they've gotten some some good defensive pieces as well. So um, I, I think the Panthers are definitely going to be better than what they were last year. It's hard for them to be worse, but, you know, I, I think they can win six games or something, um, maybe seven. Uh, and, you know, who knows? So if, like, every other team is worse here, then they could, they could take it. But um, I feel like a lot has to happen, and I think that they're uh, at least a year away from it, but. Um, I mean, think about the Falcons last year. Like, even if Cousins is not that good, the, Fal the Falcons are really like one win away. Um, like, uh, up until Week 18, they were one win away from being in right. first in the division, sure. and they they had the worst season long quarterbacking in the NFL. Like, they get like some teams had terrible quarterbacking at times, but because of injuries. But like the Falcons all year, they they had Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke. Like, they had no good quarterbacking at all the entire year. Um, mm -hmm. And yet they were so close to winning, and now they now they have an upgrade. They're like even if Cousins is bad, like he's still gonna be an upgrade, right. you know. So right for for sure, I'm I'm writing some of this down over here. I'm gonna get my NFL futures in a row, right okay. here on the show. So Panthers, I'm gonna look into Panthers over wins, mm -hmm. and 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 maybe see what the value is if there's any value on them making the playoffs. So I'm yeah. gonna start making a, making a list here. Yeah. I, I like the over wins, especially if it's I mean, wh what how many games did they win last year too? Mm -hmm. If it's yep. like three and a, you don't think it would be like three and a half? It's probably four, maybe. Four and a half, probably. Four and a half. No, that's I, my I guess. The, uh, it's not going to come out I, until uh, until after the draft. Yeah, I would take the over. I would too. Yeah. 
If it's four, uh, yeah, I think they could win win five games. Yeah, I, th- I think Stone Cold Lock unders are Patriots and Broncos, um, and may- maybe the Giants. Maybe I have to see their schedule. Um, but in the AFC, definitely, definitely Patriots and Broncos. Yeah, I, I, I love, I love the Patriots. Where do you think they are? Three and a half, or no? I, I think four and a half is gonna be the lowest. Card- Cardinals last year four and a half. Four, four and a half for the Patriots. Oh, I'll take the alt under three and a half. I bet they, I bet they go two and fifteen. Yeah, I, I think, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think Denver's, so, I think Denver's in the same boat. In fact, Denver might be worse. Really? Oh yeah, because at least the Patriots have good defensive players. Like, I, I guess the Broncos have Patrick Sertain and a couple other guys, but like, their quarterbacks are like, I, I would take Jacoby Brissett in a like, in a heartbeat over what the what the uh, the Broncos have a quarterback. Like the Broncos have Jared Stidham and Ben DiNucci. Like at least like Jacoby Brissett can play well. Like we've seen it in the past couple of years. Uh, whereas like Stidham had what one good game in, in two years, and then he fell apart. Uh, and then Ben DiNucci, like who's that? You know, like they're gonna draft they're gonna draft a quarterback at twelve, I think, and it's gonna be a reach. It's gonna be like Christian Ponder or Blaine Gabbard all over again. It's gonna be horrible. Mm-hmm. And, and and I feel like Sean Payton is checked out. I don't think you don't think he's the same coach. Yeah. See. You know, if, if you were going to bet a team for fewest regular season wins, I, I think I'd sooner take the Patriots over the Broncos, though, just because, like, the, I think the, their divisions. Like, the Broncos yeah. could maybe find find a way to beat the Chargers or the Raiders, you know, as opposed to the Patriots. They, they could easily go 0-6 against yep. the, the Bills, Dolphins, and, and Jets. So I, I, I will, will actually look into uh, fewest regular season wins for the Patriots, too. Or, oh, or yeah. maybe you know what? Or, or maybe take both them, uh, the uh, the Patriots and the Broncos. It's it's probably a it's it's probably a, a decently high number. I would think, yeah, I would think so. I, um, I took the the Bears with the fewest wins. What, two seasons <clears throat> two seasons ago? When remember the Texans? All they had to do was lose to get the number one pick, and Lovey Smith they won the game. I was like, yep. no way, because <laughs> then they. Uh, for, for, for the sports betting crowd, I, I don't know if you had ever heard of this rule. It's called the dead heat rule. If you bet a future for like fewest or most wins and a team ties, you get half your – if it's two teams, then you get half your – you get yeah. paid out half the wins. Same thing happens in golf if you bet like top five or top tens. Yeah, yeah. So uh, – and, and I, I didn't know that uh, before. Well, actually, you know what? It happened to me the season before because I bet – I remember I was on the either on the phone with you or uh, texting you, and the Packers were like – 30 to one for uh best for uh, most regular season wins yeah and, and they, they, that. that was the year they were the one seed i couldn't i couldn't believe it because i was like this this number looks wrong it must have been uh wrong but but I, I i got it so sometimes i can you know i have a good track record of the of the but the, but the dead heat rule applied there too yeah because there was two teams with with 13 so yeah that was cool because i mean i only got half my bet but i, I didn't even expect the bears to be in it i was like the texans no way they're gonna win this last <laughs> game i was like oh nice yeah yeah so, they uh <laughs> yeah they uh they beat the colts uh so yeah they yeah. not only did they hurt themselves they helped the colts so it's very very <laughs> lovey smith is, lovey smith is the man yep <laughs> <laughs> so, that's awesome that's awesome yeah. Uh, All right, NFC, NFC, NFC North or NFC Central as uh, used to be called. Uh, the Lions plus one thirty, Packers plus two ten, Bears plus three fifty, Vikings plus seven fifty. Bears look interesting plus three fifty. They're a really good team, but like the Lions and Packers are really good teams too. Um, they're all in. I think they're all in the top. T- no, the Packers and Lions are in the top ten in my power rankings. I think the Bears are close. Um, so I. Man, I just like I like I love the Lions and Packers so much. It's hard for me to bet the Bears with a rookie quarterback at plus three fifty, but they could definitely do it. Um, if if like if I were slightly more pessimistic about the Lions and Packers, I'd love the Bears. But again, it's I, it's a true three horse race here, so I don't think I'm going to bet either any of these. I'm probably not going to take uh, any of them either. I mean, I like the. <clears throat> I think the value for the Packers is the best, even though I'm a Packers fan. But I'd go with the Lions here. You know, obviously they left us disappointed. Uh, you and you and I, especially Walt, since we had them to, to win the Super Bowl. But you know, the Lions had a really interesting season last year. They they started out uh, really hot. You know, they were finally you know people were paying attention to them. Then they struggled a little bit. You know, at, near the end of the season, but then turned it on again. You know, I, I think the Lions as a franchise, maybe you, you know now now they see that they can do it. 
you know, they and, and they also showed some resiliency in last season because at some point I was like, geez, like, I can't believe they look so good. Like, I guess they're probably not going to make a run at it. But then they did, mm-hmm. you know, then, then they, they they got it. They got it together. So I, I don't know. I, I think that team is going to continue to head into a positive in, in a positive direction. So I, I, I think they'll probably probably win it. I don't think they're going to, you know, unless they have injuries are, are going to slump you know, this year after, after one good year. So, and the Packers are, are still really young too. Um, you know, obviously Jordan Love and, you know, all the receivers are, are tight or are, are receivers and tight ends were rookies in second year. So they're still a young team as well. I, I would still take the lines here, I think. Yeah, I would too. Uh, Chris says the Bears were in such a great spot and they basically did everything wrong. Uh, very nice for the lines. Yeah. Um, they had, they had like the third most cap space entering the off season. I'm like, wow, what are they going to do? And like, their first move was like signing DeAndre Swift for no reason. <laughs> and then um, I, I like the Keenan Allen trade. That was nice for them. But outside of that, they haven't done anything. So, uh, yeah, uh, at the, I feel like the Lions improved more with less cap space. Like they they got uh, DJ Reader, um, Kevin Zeitler. They um, they traded for Carlton Davis. They got uh, Amik Robertson. Uh, they made some good moves this offseason. I, I think that you could argue that they're even going to be better this year than they were last year. So, um, out of every team in this division, it feels like the Lions have proved the most. Um, you know, the Packers haven't done much in the offseason. The Vikings lost Kirk Cousins. So, yeah, the Lions are plus 130. I, if I were to bet any of these, I think it'd be that, but you're not getting a great number. So, um, it's just basically a pass. I, I think I'd just rather bet them to win the Super Bowl. Um, How hard do you think it is to be a GM? Do you think it's like in that movie Draft Day? <laughs> I, uh, well, <laughs> I mean, is it, it's how hard is it to be a, a GM or a good GM? Because Matt Millen was a GM for almost a decade, and he was terrible. Um, so I, I guess like, like, you just have to be good with numbers, right? Like an accountant, sort of like or adjacent. No, I, I don't. I don't think you need yeah, that. Like, you, you, that you could. You could have. Uh, you could have a salary cap guy working for you. You know, I, I don't think you need to know the numbers. Um, I think you need to be great at scouting. I think and talent evaluation. Um, mm-hmm. That I mean, that's that's how they like usually. That mean people are scouts, and then they become regional scouts, and then become okay. uh, heads of scouting departments, and they become um, uh, VP of player personnel, and then then they're hired as GMs. So uh, yeah, I well, mean, I, I didn't know all that. That's cool. This was this, this show is educational too. <laughs> it is. I, yeah, I, I mean, know. yeah, I mean, there are only thirty two jobs of, of these out there. So um, yeah, yeah, I mean. Like I always thought, like that, and like, how do you become commissioner of the league? Like, what, what you think they were like former GM, like Goodell? Like, what did he do before? I guess I could just look it up. But uh, Goodell was a lawyer, from what I know. Um, oh, okay, yeah, or yeah, or something like like that. Yeah, um, you just need. I mean, you need to be. Well, I, I see. You need to be charismatic. But Goodell was not <laughs> on um, some level. You need to have. You need to be like a good face for the league, and basically, like the commissioner is basically like this bumper for the owners because it's like the commissioner, like he doesn't really have power because like the owners could vote him out if they wanted to. It's just like, like he's the mouthpiece for all the owners. Um, and so like, I, I feel like they just want a good face, you know, uh, they want someone who's going to make them a lot of money and they want like a good face. Who's not going to embarrass them. Um, which, you know, Goodell has a little bit, but, you know he's made them a ton of money, and that's why they keep him right. Up. So, what did did you like the late great David Stern, the former NBA commissioner? Uh, yeah, I had no issues with David Stern. Um, I don't, I don't like Adam Silver. Um, but David Stern, I, I liked. My my dad hates Adam Silver so much. Oh really? Oh my god! Every time I watch the NBA draft with him, he like curses at him. <laughs> it's like it's <laughs> effing like. A hole, like it just like like it just unloads in the sky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I wish I wish I could record it and post on YouTube. <laughs> I think I think my dad would want that, but I, I like everyone would laugh at. I like everyone would laugh. At. <laughs> I don't know. I guess like growing up because Stern was big. You know, when I was like, watching, you know, like you would see his face a lot around, especially in the Jordan era. Yeah, I always thought he was a good face for the league in, in a way. I don't know. It's just like recognizable. Oh yeah, to, absolutely. To me, so. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I was. Uh, let, let's finish this off before we go into uh, into into more of that. Yeah. Uh, um, Chris says Goodell specialized in bird law, which is a very desirable oh, yeah. trait with the Eagles, uh, Falcons, Ravens, Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Maggie says the commissioner is just a lightning rod for criticism to shield the owners. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. He's basically just uh, just a uh, 
a punching bag for the media. Um, <laughs> Niners minus two forty, Rams plus four fifty, Seahawks plus nine hundred, Cardinals plus eleven hundred. Um, if you were to ask me, if you were to show me this a month ago, uh, or even like three weeks ago, uh, I would have said, "Oh, Rams plus four fifty looks great." Um, but the Rams lost Aaron Donald to retirement, so um, definitely less appealing now. Uh, I still think the Rams could do it. Like they, they have a really good team. Their offense is going to be electric this year as long as Stafford can stay healthy. Um, the defense is uh, going to be a bit of a problem. I, I, you know, they did add to their secondary, which is the problem there on defense last year. Uh, their, their secondary is going to be a lot better, but their pass rush is going to be worse without Donald. Um, and the Niners, the Niners have gotten better. Um, this offseason, like no doubt, they, they've added some really good players. They got Devondre Campbell, um, they got uh, Leonard Floyd, um, a couple other guys, a couple other players. I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, they've they've gotten better too. Um, so I, I think the Niners are going to take this, and it's just it's just hard to bet this because like the Niners are just so uh, like they're such overwhelming favorites for a reason. Um, but if if the Rams still had Donald, I, I'd consider them for sure. Don't take the 49ers, man. Don't not, take not, it. Well, I'm not yeah, gonna bet it. I'm just saying yeah, I think don't, they're gonna win. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. I don't know. Maybe this is part of this is because I hate the 49ers so much, but I don't know, man. Down the stretch of the season and in the playoffs, they showed that you, you know, like I and I know you said that and they came close to winning the Super Bowl, sure, but I don't know. I feel like maybe they got exposed a little bit. Like I, I just like I had mentioned earlier in the season previous seasons like they were always like the juggernaut you know crushing teams that they're supposed to crush and and, and that sort of thing and uh it, i just down the stretch of the season you didn't you didn't see that as i don't know it, it, they just look look different yeah we'll probably still win the division but i mean i don't know something tells me purdy's just not going to be i don't know i i, I think he's going to have, have a little have a little falling off here maybe I like the Rams, the value at, at, at plus 450. I thought they were – yeah, losing Donald really sucks but mm-hmm. for them. But still plus 450, if, if I was going to take anything, it would definitely be that. I don't know. I'm also biased. I can't stand the 49ers. So take this for whatever it's worth, which may be nothing. Fair enough. That's fine too. Fair <laughs> enough. All right, so we're approaching two hours. Uh, our last topic, I think we should get into Game of Thrones. Uh, you rewatched, so I, I rewatched, and then you watched for the first time seasons two, season two, episodes two and three. Um, basically, uh, not not a lot of action in these uh, in these two episodes, but uh, you had a little bit at the end of episode three. But um, I think this is just like a lot of build up for uh, for the finale, or or actually the episode nine, which is Battle of Blackwater which is uh, known as a uh, great episode. Um, uh, one of my wife's favorites, by the way, we, we, we actually ranked all the episode nines and she, I think she had battle of Blackwater as her second favorite after the red wedding. Um, so yeah, this is a build up for that. Uh, you get more intro to all the characters, uh, you get more into Stannis. You finally see uh, Pike, uh, which I don't know if you caught that in the intro. They, they, in the, in the credits, they went to Pike um, and you know, Theon sees his dad for the first time in, in nine years. Um, and you see, you know, like the, the failed, uh, you know, the failed plan between Theon and, uh, and Rob Stark, um, which they, they thought they could bring the gray joys to the side, which is not going to happen. Um, so you have that. Uh, I don't think we had any Daenerys uh, in episode three. I don't think we even saw Jamie Lannister in these two episodes from what I remember. No, I, don't I don't think, think I don't either. think, and I don't think we saw Joffrey, uh, very much or uh, if at all. Um, but we did see a lot of Arya with with Gendry, which is you know uh, everyone's favorite favorite pairing, uh, at least at this time. Um, and then uh, yeah, I, I, like more Stannis. Uh, you got to see Stannis's right hand man, um, uh, Davos Seaworth, uh, talking to a pirate to to try to try to get more forces on their side. Um, and and yeah, and then Catelyn Stark goes to negotiate with uh, Renly Baratheon, uh, and you get to see Brienne of Tarth for the first time. Uh, this huge woman who's just beats up uh, the the night of flowers. Um, so yeah, I, I I thought good good episodes. Uh, and uh, I thought one of my favorite segments, and you like this as well because we talked about before the show where Tyrion, um, kind yeah, of yeah. Uh, Tyrion kind of conspires with uh, Maester Pycelle, Littlefinger, and Varys, and to see which one is going to betray him. And I always thought that like when you ever ha- you have le- leaks in the NFL front offices. I feel like I would do this. I feel like I would leak false info to, to like everyone to individually. 
um, and see what story breaks. And they'd be like, aha, I found you. You you are the guy leaking to the media. You were fired. That's what I would do. But anyway, uh, what are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on these episodes? Uh, any or so, any observations so or what happened? Yeah, so that, that's interesting that you bring that up. So do you think that um, all three, if, if any of them had, you know, I understand what he was trying to do. He was telling, it was a great scene because I had to take it back. I was like, wait, they weren't in the room before. And then I, I thought he was maybe imagining, Tyrion was maybe imagining that or like what he'd say. So do you think whatever uh, one that got back uh, to her, he would have just, he would have stuck with that and he was cool with all three plans? Or do you think he would have, just use that as the marker to know who told and then be like, actually, let's do it this way. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that was the genius behind the whole thing. Where it's like you see how Tyrion is playing the game much better than Ned Stark. Whereas like Ned Stark goes from like point A to point B. He's like, oh, this is what this is what John Aaron did. Uh, he talks to these people. He talked to these people. Oh, he oh, John Aaron found out that um, all the Robert Rathian's kids were not his. Uh, let me confront Cersei, and you know, like whereas like Tyrion is is uh, he's he's pretty adept. He knows how the game is played, right? Because he's been around yeah. King's Landing for forever, and um, he's his father is a genius and and whatnot. So Tyrion's handling this so much better than Ned Stark. And I think the genius behind it is that like Tyrion was cool with any of these scenarios, like marrying uh, Marcella, his uh, his 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 niece to um to either dorn the martels uh who have a huge army in the south uh having them uh, as an ally is great uh marrying um her to to robert arian the, the weird kid um in in the veil you know like the veil they they have they have a, they have a substantial force um and also uh marrying her to theon Greyjoy, you get um now the the Greyjoys don't have the greatest army but they have the most they have, they're the best at sea um, they have, they, have, they have the most ships and stuff like that. And you know, that, that, that could win you a war. So any of these three plans were like, they were, were good. Cause you know, they're, they're fighting a war on two fronts, uh, or even three fronts really, because they're fighting against Rob Stark from the North. And they're, they're also fighting against both Baratheon brothers, uh, who have different armies. Um, and so they need help. Like the Lannisters right now, and, and I think Tyrion even said it. They're like, you know, we're losing the war. He's like, you realize that, right? We're losing the war. I think he's talking to Cersei um, because they're fighting against both the Starks and the Baratheon brothers. So uh, without any allies, so they need allies. So it was, I, I think, I think Tyrion is smart to do it this way. I just, why, why would they keep Joffrey in there? You know, he's just like a kid, especially like there's a, there's a war, like happening because like wouldn't you just be like hey little bro like for now you'll you'll get your chair here in a second but let's get someone in here with a little experience first yeah but like joffrey's not making any decisions right it's uh in the in the battlefield it's tywin lannister who's making all the decisions and then um it, it, as far as king Landing's is concerned Tyrion's doing all the stuff like joffrey joffrey's like uh, okay. handling like you know hey this 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 guy was singing bad about your dad at a tavern and like that Joffrey's making decisions on what to how to punish him like that that's what Joffrey's doing and he loves it you know he's like he's like cut off his tongue you know and so um so he yeah. like he loves doing that stuff but as far as like handling the day-to-day -day stuff um you know ha like the war efforts like he has no part in it at all um and there is um I don't, I, I don't think this is a spoiler um I'm gonna tell you anyway but like there's a there's a really cool scene between Tywin and Joffrey in season three where um you're you're gonna love this anyway like, you're gonna love it the, even even if i'm telling you so i'm not like spoiling anything but like they're, they're they're at a meeting or something like that and like joffrey is just like yelling he's just like yelling belligerently and uh tywin's like my grandson has is tired send him to bed <laughs> and, and uh <laughs> and, and joffrey's like but i'm the king you can't send me to bed i'm the king and uh tywin goes any man who must say I am the king is no true king. <laughs> and like jo Joffrey just like <laughs> stares at him, and um, and Tywin Tywin's like, my son needs my son's exhausted. Go to bed. And so like <laughs> they they actually send him to bed. So you can actually see who's in charge. It's not it's not Joffrey. It's Tywin Lannister. He's the richest man in in Westeros. Of course he's in charge. Real quick, that made me think of a funny story. Real quick, just I'll give you the abbreviated version. 
I was in Vegas working like back in 2017 and I was with my coworker. We pulled into a gas station and we see a car there also parked at the gas station and they had a, one of those vanity plates and it said, Mr. Suave on their license plate, <laughs> Mr. Suave. So I leaned to my buddy, I was like, you know how I know that's not Mr. Right, Suave? Right. Because Mr. Suave doesn't advertise. Yeah. <laughs> Any man who must say I am Mr. Suave. Exactly. Is Suave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, Ty, I, I love I love Tywin Lash. He's the best. Like we you haven't seen too much of him yet, but like in seasons three and four, he becomes very prominent. So um yeah, yeah he's, he's great. Uh yeah, and, yeah. and 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 you know, he's like you see that like <clears throat> the fact that he's the richest man in Westeros, uh he's he's the one who pulls all the strings and stuff like that. So uh chris says it's it's odd how smart Tyrion was and they basically became bill o'brien in the last few seasons obviously due to running out of book material yeah that is that is that that's what happens in the final couple of seasons all the smart characters become dumb all the dumb characters become smart uh it makes no sense uh that's that's why i've I told you so many times not to watch the final two seasons yeah i i it, really won't i really won't uh, yeah. i i hope i hope they don't i mean i'm not going to look at your reaction because i don't want it to give away because Tyrion's. Tyrion's probably my favorite character, so I hope I hope they keep him around for at least a little bit. So mm, yeah, well, I tell those right. I, was, I I tell people don't don't get attached to anyone on the show. Yeah, I and I knew that going in. There's but, a lot. There's know. a lot more death to come. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Jeez, and these and and a, and a lot more incest too. Apparently, jeez, yes. these <laughs> these people really took get in where you fit into heart. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they're, not, they're not playing around. No, it's. I mean, I guess what you, you were we were talking about this, like to keep back, that, like to keep your bloodline pure or whatever. For the Targaryens, yes. The, at yeah, least they yeah. they had an ex, uh, an explanation for it because they needed dragon riders, so they wanted right, pure blood right. for the dragon riders. It was like the Lannisters, like it's not just incest; it's twin cests with these uh, with ja Jamie and Cersei, you know. So. Um, that that is extra weird, and then um, and then at least like Theon didn't know that was his sister. He hadn't seen her in nine years. You know, at least that's an, it's an excuse. Um, twin cest. Twin cest. Yes. <laughs> um, oh my god, we 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 go we go over it all. No, but I, I mean, it's uh it's it's funny. Like uh, uh, Greyjoy, there he's he didn't even realize that was his, his sister, and he's yeah. like. He's giving her, giving her the old, you know, secret massage re reach around <laughs> there on the, on the way over. Like, geez, like, isn't it Relax. like dangerous, dangerous while you're riding a horse to do that? Like, I don't, I feel like <laughs> you probably shouldn't do that on a horse. Have you ever ridden a horse? When I was a kid, they put me on that pony. I think like I, that's, that's all I've done. I, I, I rode a horse once. I dated this girl for a very short amount of time, but she had horses. So like I got up on oh. it. it it's, it's a lot scarier than you think, at least for me. Oh, I yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do it again. Um, yeah, I have no desire to do it. Um, uh, Chris says, at least watch the last episode of season seven. I, all you need to do is watch the last scene of season seven, right? Like the uh, the really cool scene with the dragon. I, I think that's all he needs to see. And then Chris says, episode three of season eight. Uh, see, that was a disappointment as well. I, I wish I could get into it, but that that was a big disappointment. There was a lot of action in that episode, but it was very disappointing um, overall. Um, and it was hard to see everything because it was all in the dark. Um, so uh, yeah, I would not recommend that. Um, but it, it was it was an exciting episode. It's just when you look back at it, it's like man, that could have been so much better. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's how you describe uh, the final two seasons. So, um, any any other observations before we uh, call in tonight? Uh, geez, well, I mean, I don't know. There's 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 so much going on. I saw so I saw Needle got its first kill there too, right? That was the name of the sword, right? Is it Needle? Well, not officially your first kill. She ki remember she killed that fat little boy in uh, episode ten of last of season one. Oh, that's one. right. No, you're you're right. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, uh, someone took needle, and he's like, "I could pick my teeth with this." <laughs> so, right, right. Oh man. Um, was you so you're saying I can I can skip the, the whole all of season seven and eight except for these two two spots, and I'll, I'll be able to know what's going on, or is it just for like a, like a visual like? No, no, no. Uh, so last up, last scene of season seven is really cool, really cool scene with a dragon. What what this oh, okay. dragon does? Um, 
is as all you need to do is watch the scene. It's just so cool. Um, and then uh, episode three of season eight is like all action. Um, it's a very exhilarating episode. And like while like when I was watching it for the first time, I was like, man, this is so cool. It's really cool. And then I like I, and when the episode ended, I'm like, I'm like, ah, I didn't like how it ended. And then I was like, wait, I didn't like that either. And I was like, wait, I didn't like that either. And then like I was like, I need to rewatch this. So I, I watched it for this, the second time because I, I was doing the um, I was doing a Game of Thrones podcast with Kenny at the time. And because um, I, I rewatched the, the episodes anyway. And so I watched the, the I rewatched that episode for the second time and like not because like not like knowing everything that's going to happen. I watched it. I was like, man, this is not a good episode. Like, there's, there's so much wrong with it. Uh, and I just pointed out all the flaws. And like, I think Kenny agreed. He's like, he's like, yeah, this it was exciting at the time. But if you rewatch it, you're like, that man, they really screwed this up. So it's just uh, emblematic. Of, uh, let, let, of, let me ask you this: Do you know anyone who likes season seven and eight? And as, as a second part to the question, if so, do you know anyone who loves season seven and eight? No, not loves. I've, I've. Um, I've seen, I've heard some people say it's okay. Um, that's a lot that's of people, like the most crazy. You, you, you never heard anyone say more than it's okay. No, never, never. Like, I, I'm just trying to get an idea of how like ubiquitous it is. Like, would you say like pretty much the entire Game of Thrones community and its viewers mostly agree that the last two seasons are not, they, they agree that at least it's a drop off from the rest. Would you say that? It's, most a, it's a huge drop off because George R. R. Martin was no longer involved because, uh, he there was no more book material to go off of um and they basically kicked them out <laughs> and uh they george r. r martin said he said we need 13 seasons to to do to do everything right and the uh, hbo guys like no we're doing eight <laughs> and uh so they skipped a lot um a lot of stuff didn't make any sense uh what characters did were out like way out of the character as uh who, who said it? it was a Chris? Yeah, Chris said, uh, yeah, Tyrion was a, a very smart character until they ran out of book material and then became an incredibly dumb character. Like, none of the, none of what the characters did, like, you know how, you know how I said that, like, Littlefinger and Varys are the most intriguing characters right now uh, mm -hmm. because they're so smart. They know everything behind the scenes. Uh, yeah. when you get to seven and eight, they are very stupid. Um, they do the dumbest things. And so, um, mm. yeah, so it's, it's, it becomes terrible. Um, how, how many how many people are out there do you think that say they like season seven and eight better than the than say I've, the first I've never heard that you, opinion I don't think that exists like because if that opinion existed would you think would you be suspect of the person that says that yeah I'd be like what drugs are you taking um because <laughs> because seasons one through four is like some of the best television that's ever been made. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then five, five, five is you see a bit of a drop off, but like five is hard home, like the episode called Hard Home, uh, one uh, such an incredible episode. And then season six had a, a scene called Hold the Door, uh, which is man, one of the, one of the chilling moments of uh, like TV. Oh, wow. And then uh, it had Battle of the Bastards, which is a great episode, and the final episode where you find out who um, John Stark's mother is, uh, sorry, um, uh, John Snow's mother is. Uh, you okay. find out who, yeah, and and like that that whole episode is really good, um, but then it all falls apart. So um, that, I think that was the last of their book material because because it wasn't like you don't you don't get the reveal of John Snow's mother in the book yet, but like they knew because George R. R. Martin told them they, they and they guessed correctly, but they knew so mm -hmm. they did that part well at least. Um, what if I'm so, what if I'm the person that likes seven and eight better? Well, I'm gonna have to question you. Uh, <laughs> ask you what drugs what if, you're what on. If, what, if, what if that obligation falls to me? That's that's my destiny. You're like the only I person. Really no, because you know it won't. You know I know I won't because I, I said I wouldn't watch it as per okay. your recommendation. So okay. you won't. You yeah. See, friends don't let friends be the first person to like season seven and eight. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like you know it's like it's like you're at a party or something. And you're like, oh man, who's that girl? And like, I've, I've, dude, uh, Tom, if I was like. Dude, don't go near her. Dude, you're gonna regret it. Don't do it. What would you do? Would you still go after her, or would you listen to me? Well, I mean, I'd be much more intrigued, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. You'd be like, why? Why? What's wrong? <laughs> no, no. Then, oh, yeah, of course, I wouldn't. I'm the yeah. ultimate con contrarian. <laughs> yeah, for, I exactly. I, I, I mean, I was exaggerating there, Chris, but I would put myself uh, somewhere between somewhat and rather contrarian. I would somewhere in 
in, in, in that range. But yeah, that, that, you know, it's just, that sounds like something that would happen to me, but I, I, I don't know. Like I, I do, I, I can also tell when, you know, good, good TV drops off. Like, I mean, like, I think we've talked about this before, like with the office, once Michael yeah. leaves it, there are maybe the finale was good. And there was maybe one episode that I can think of right now, which was Gettysburg. That was good. After Michael left, Gettysburg was funny, had some really good moments. But other than that, like, I, I won't even watch those again. It's, yeah. it's so like, and I hate to say this because it's the office is one of my favorite shows. It's, it's so like incredibly stupid at times. It's, it's, yeah. it's cringy. And, and Parks and Recreation did, I know you didn't watch Parks and Rec, but so like, I, I really think my point is, that I don't think there's any way that I'd be like, all of a sudden be like, oh, I like the season seven and eight better, you know, once it drops off. I mean, I, um, I can. Let, let, let me let me put it to you this way: uh, Season seven and eight in Game and Game of Thrones is like The Office after Michael Scott leaves, but also with um, Jim acting like Stanley and um, and Pam being a drug addict for no reason, and um, and Stanley being Dwight and Dwight being a normal person, um, and um, Dwight driving from his office to uh his home in 1.3 seconds uh and uh and like none of it just and, and none of it making any sense like, uh all, all the consistency that you've known for so long is just gone it'd be like all the characters not acting like any of the other characters it was just just like uh it's that's really weird yeah yeah they 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 completely ruined it it's not like it was just like uh some plot holes here and there you know you could have lived with that but like none of the characters were what any of them were before as, as again like chris said Tyrion goes from really smart to being one of the dumbest characters on the show um and some of the dumb characters become geniuses like it just doesn't make any sense like little finger little finger becomes a moron like varus becomes even even dumber than that um wow it's just, yeah it, that's, it was that, that, that's really that's really disappointing yeah yeah it was terrible um so uh any anything else on uh on the show before we head out, I think that, I think that, I think that's that's about it. I, I have been paying attention to the to the credits, the opening credits. Okay. I started making notes for each one. Nice. So I see I see that they're a little map. So I'm going to be on the lookout for when it changes again. You know. Yeah. Well, when you're done a season six, I'll, you'll have to see the opening credits of season eight. It's radically different um, because some uh, if something happens at the end of season seven to to like alter the entire landscape. Um, which is which is the scene that we're that Chris and I were talking about with the dragon. So um, really cool stuff. So uh, anyway, uh, that is it for this episode. Uh, please hit like, subscribe, comment below, share this video, visit the link in the description for the merch store. All that mean a lot to us. Uh, thanks so much, Slu, for the five fifty five uh, super Thank chat. Just really, really appreciate it, Slu. Thank you so much. Just, I appreciate can't say it. enough like how much this helps us out here. Uh, so uh, also, as you can see on the screen, our, my book is out apparently, which I, I didn't think was me out tonight, but it is jerks <laughs> of the college years on Amazon. You can, you can, you can get it. So uh, thank you so much for everyone who's already bought it already. Um, uh, Kafka, <laughs> Kafka shows up at the end of <laughs> season seven. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Kafka is uh, one of the best villains of all time in video game history. Um <laughs> At the, I I really would love to write uh, Final Fantasy VI as a TV show. I just don't, I don't have the time, but I would love to do it one day. Uh, but I, I've talked about that before. But uh, any anyway, um, Tom, uh, thank you so much for coming on. Just just always love doing the show with you. Yeah, it's uh, always a great time, man. Do you want to plug your uh, your uh, your uh, Twitch here, which uh, you can see, you can see uh, I still had on from the other night. Oh, nice. Yeah, thank you. Oh, Carmen, thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate you. Oh, I didn't, let me thank see. Thank you so yeah, much, see. Carmen, for the support. Carmen, oh, yeah, also yeah, thank you. Me. Yeah, Carmen, thank you so much for the five dollar super sticker. It's awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, uh, Carmen's been helping me me out with some <laughs> some Game of Thrones questions too. So I appreciate okay. you. Appreciate you very much. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a stream here, maybe in like 20 minutes after we nice. get off the show here. Um, you know, for those of you that have never, you know, give me a follow on here on here. On on, uh, on Twitch and on Twitter, um, I always tweet them out when I'm when I'm on there. Uh, it's just like uh, us bantering on here with a video game on in the background. It's uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. So come on out and hang out and hope to see you out there. Yeah, for sure. I'll uh, I'll pop into uh, the comments uh, as I usually do. 
Um, and I'll tweet out the link uh, in case you guys don't have it. So, uh, yeah, join Tom uh, for the Twitch streams. Always great conversation on there. Always love listening. Uh, e- even if I don't comment, I always, I always like like to hear what you guys are talking about. Um, and you get to watch you get you get to watch Super Mario Brothers uh, hard levels uh, as a bonus. So, yeah, it's always, exactly. It's it's, it's it's double the entertainment. Yeah, it's always um, nice. Yeah, um, we, we get into a myriad of topics. It, it's it's similar. To, it's similar to the 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 off season version of this show, just yep. with me, <laughs> just just one person. So if you enjoy <laughs> this, you might enjoy the stream. But yeah, appreciate all the support, everybody. Yeah, I think you guys will enjoy it. So um, yeah, um, always always uh, enjoy do- doing a show with you, Tom. Uh, same schedule as, uh, as this week. Next week we have Jacob on on Tuesday, Kenny Wednesday, and then Tom uh, Thursday and or Saturday. We'll see uh, Tom's availability. But yeah, hopefully hopefully two episodes. Which hopefully is both. Hopefully fun. both. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, once again, thank you guys, uh, for commenting, watching, just really appreciate it. Thank you, Carmen for the super sticker and thanks slew for the super chat. Thank you. All. Uh, yeah, really appreciate it guys. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have a great Easter, um, a great rest of the weekend and I'll talk to you on Tuesday. Have a good night.